Warning. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander viewers are warned that the following program contains images, references to, and voices of deceased persons. Viewer discretion is advised. AFL Northern Territory thanks the Australian Broadcasting Corporation, the ABC, for allowing us to broadcast this game. This broadcast may not be reproduced by any means without the express permission of the ABC as the rights holder. Coming from the vault is the 2000-2001 grand final between the Palms and Magpies and the Darwin Buffalo Football Club. Yeah, look, my, my first season at the, um, at the club as, as coach, um, we actually came fourth and, and got knocked out um, straight away in the elimination final. Second year, um, we made it through to a grand final against a very, very good side in Waratahs um, and well coached by Bill Martin, obviously. And then my third year, we, we managed to get back in the grand final and, and actually win. So um, we think... Looking back now, um, it, it was really the learnings from that 1999-2000 grand final um, that we were able to put into place for 2000-2001, which I think really helped us to, to achieve the ultimate goal of uh, a premiership. The season itself uh, was a very good season for us. I think we dropped a couple of games throughout the year, um, but the Darwin Buffaloes were the team that pushed us regularly. Every game we played. Um, they, they were the side that really extended us um, and we had to pull out all stops in, in every game that we played that year against the Darwin Buffaloes. But uh, we we're a very, very young side. Um, probably the youngest side I've been involved with in, in my time as, as, a, as a coach and a player at, at senior level. Um, so it was quite easy from a coaching point of view to have influence over those young fellas and um, they responded very well and we had a great core group of uh, senior players as well that were just terrific. The name Palmerston Magpies was only two or three years old. Uh, obviously, formerly it was a North Darwin football club, and um, the members decided that they were going to move out to Palmerston. And um, I, I believe there was a lot of it was a contentious um, move from a lot of them. They, they, they weren't real keen on it. But um, the president of the day, Mick Milady, and, and, and you know his committee were pretty keen that for for North Darwin to survive, that they, they needed to move out to Palmerston and. Um, I suppose with that, you know, you, you, you could say that the Darwin Buffaloes and the Palmerston Magpies were very much a working class football clubs. Obviously, Darwin Buffaloes' history is a lot, a lot longer than what the Palmerston is, but very similar in that. Um, and it, it took a while for the Palmerston Magpies to get this, but they really started to flourish as a family club, which um, was something that the Darwin Buffaloes have always been. I had an exceptional um, coaching personnel to work with. Uh, Michael Major McLean was, um, was an assistant coach. Um, obviously his, his record speaks for himself and he'd only just previously two years before that been an assistant coach at Brisbane Lions so he brought unbelievable knowledge uh, to the table. Uh, Robbie Corrie was another one. Uh, he also coached the um, reserves that year who won. They, they actually won the grand final as well so we, we won the reserves and seniors in 2000-2001. Um, Rob is a kid that, well a bloke, sorry, that I went to kindergarten with so we knew each other very, very well and the other one was Jock McLeod um, who was our chairman of selectors um, and Jock's role was not just being on the selection committee but he had beautiful handwriting so we utilised that, uh, especially on the whiteboard for writing up the teams and any messages we need to get across and he also wrote out um, a quarter by quarter report for us to analyse after, um, after each game so um, if you're going to be a playing coach, you, you need that support and you need confidence of the blokes sitting on the sideline. I certainly had that and um, they, were, they were just great people to work with. Yeah, I think one of the key messages heading into the grand final for us was the fact that the club hadn't won a premiership in 20 years. Um, and in fact, they'd only ever had won one. Um, so we wanted to create a bit of history for ourselves and, and certainly a bit of history for the club. And I think that was really the driving force that coupled with the fact that we learnt so much from the previous year um, in, in the loss to, to Waratahs, I didn't have to motivate the players too much. Um, I, I can remember driving around Palmerston well before pre-season started and seeing several players um, doing their long runs. You know, Mark Tyrrell, who was captain of the side, um, him and his family would often see them running around Palmerston. Corey Kernoff, uh, the great Jerry Frank, you know, these guys, they were, they were just... 
I was just switched on. Um, there was very little motivational. Um, oh, I just didn't have to use too much motivation, except the fact that you know we hadn't won one in 20 years. We only won one, and you know it was our time to, to create a bit of history for ourselves in the club. And you know that was sort of our catch cry for the year, and um, it, it seemed to have worked. Well, that looks a little menacing. That storm out there. They've, uh, we've known in the past for them to come storming in, Bill Martin, those, uh, those ones that come in from behind the airport. Well, certainly a good toss to win, Charlie. The, um, the breeze factor favouring the end in which Buffett decide to kick, and uh, if that is a five-goal breeze and weather plays a uh, part in it later on, that could be invaluable. Let them settle down with the nerves and get on with the business and host a few majors nice and early. Gallagher with the job on Stokes. He did it well in the, uh, the last time they met in the last minor round game. Keegan doing the ruck work in the middle for the Maggies. The big man charged up, crouched in there as umpire Adam Roberts gets ready to get the grand final underway. Durke in the goal square. Who's got him, Bill? Russell Jeffries, and uh, that's a surprise first up. Russell with the big man in the goal square. Tap out of the middle came from Richard Russell. First kick for the Maggies. Smother, smother down. Ross with a little kick off the ground. Efren Tippen Woody charges at the footy, gets onto the left boot. Kicks it to the goal square. He's kicked the goal. Oh, oh it's rolled <laughs> away to the right and went through for a behind, I think. Oh, they let it go over the top and the result was a behind. Well, it was like an explosion, wasn't it? It was an, like an explosion going off. Munkara, Tip and Woody, they're just going to be so big factors in this game today. They're electric. Drew Chappell. First kick out for the Maggies, up to the 50 metre line defensive. Plenty of black and white jumpers, jumpers there. Ryan Ayers, who can kick a mile, bangs it off the left boot. He's missed as well. He's kicked it behind. Oh, great start to the grand final. First two scores on the board to the Darwin Buffaloes. Well, that two breeze, behinds. Breeze has having an impact already, Charlie. Drew Trappel, you normally see him kick the ball in and it lands in the centre square. That one hovered and hung up over the 50 metre line. Buffs were able to rebound quickly. So um, they might have to uh, rethink this kicking strategy with Chapel. They huddled at centre half back, did the Magpies, and they broke off to the far side of the ground. Front position. Good mark down there on the far side of the ground. That was Durkay. Durkay chips it in. Williams let it go for his teammate and then chased it. Mick Williams got there and lost it. Hard work in there for, by Robbie Swift. Ball forced out towards the centre of the ground. Matty Armat caught from behind. Couldn't get his hands free. Umpire comes in. Ben Smith and says, settle it down, fellas. I'll ball it up between centre half forward and the centre with Darwin in attack. Well, Ben Smith was great there. He was right on the scene and uh, doesn't want to let it get congested. And he went in there very quickly and uh, good decision. It's the biggest game of the year for the umpires as well, too. We sometimes forget that. Shepard provided there cleverly by uh, McLeod. The ball kicked towards the boundary line. Davey chases it. Couldn't get it in and rolled over in front of uh, the Darwin supporters. Off to our right at the airport end or uh, the Bonson Gate ends, if you like, Bill. It is, Charlie, and uh, the crowd is certainly getting part of this game already. But Matty Knight's got the job on Trent Henschel again. And uh, as we mentioned, Russell Jeffrey on big Gary Durke. Keegan had front position. Kick came out foresight. Put it in the middle of the ground. Good work here. Slick little handball came across to Balseed. From the middle, vacant centre half forward. Kicks it up there. Ball bounces on the line. Knocked away cleverly here. Knight doing some good work. Kicked off the ground further out there. For Darwin as they can come away with Efren Tip and Woody. That's a great kick. Set it up for Damien Zammett. Just on the defensive side of the wing. Chips upfield. Ryan Ayers in front position. Then he wants to play on. Breaks away onto the left boot. It was Simon Quall, in fact. Checks Durke at the back. Ball free here. Chance for Darwin to kick it off the ground. Great work, Davey. He got around sliding across and forced it over the boundary line. Well, I could say, Charlie, I've never heard a crowd like this. I really haven't. They're just uh, they're electric and uh, it's just uh, an awesome um, atmosphere we've got here in front of us. Darwin doing all the attacking, early parts of the grand final. Durke holds front position, knocks it to ground. Davey was clever for the third time in a minute and a half. Pushes it over the boundary line, does uh, Alwyn Davey, and affects another throw in. It's 20 metres around from the behind post. Darwin in front, they've kicked two behind. Maggie's yet to score. Brent Bailey being given the job on Matty Armat, and he's wearing, wearing him very closely in the centre of the ground, and that'll have a big impact if he can uh, shut down the possessions from Matty Armat. Lone defender in the goal square is uh, Russell Jeffrey. Durke can chip it up into the forward pocket. Might have been better off having a shot for goal. It was always going to be difficult to mark there. Little kick off the, by Drew Chappell. Got it to Russell Jeffrey. Took the mark in front of the point post and then kicked it out wide. Searching out here for Forsyth. He's got the mark. Durke goes with McLeod. Kick goes along the boundary line to Alan Davey. Off he goes. Breaks away. Kicks with the left boot. Durke had to chase him. Looked a little proppy too, I can tell you that. Ball up for grabs here. 
kicked off the ground by Matty Stokes. They got in his back. Free kick played advantage given. Mousy breaks away from the wing. Wobbly kick. Good work in defence from the start from last week. Brian Ross was brilliant. High kick. Sets it up here in the centre of the ground. Ball knocked to ground. Chance here for Darwin. Little handball that came out quickly from Jared Barrington. Ball goes out to Matty Stokes. Gets to the footy. Smothering kick rolls into the centre of the ground. Good work from Darwin. They can knock it to Ryan Ayres. He's 80 metres out from goal. Looks goal with, with the breeze. Thumps long into the goal square. Kicks it behind. Boy, he went long range, Bill Martin. And he kicked it behind. Well, he did the right thing there, Ryan. He summed up his options, knew he had a fair breeze at his back, and uh, Russell Jeffrey was just brilliant. He played that kick behind, knew how far it was going to travel, and uh, avoided a free kick after a shepherd, a shepherd by Munkara down the end there. But they're doing all the tackling, the Buffaloes, with the aid of this breeze. Drew Chappell brings it up the centre half back. That's a good kick to King in front position. Knocks it to ground. Dion Kelly squirted it out wide. Wants a runner out there. Salam Hassam on the wing by himself. Will take them on and kick over the top. Malseed the target. Got it to him. Malseed 60 metres from goal. Chips it in. More oh. there. Could have taken a mark. No talking from his teammate. And he thumped it over the boundary line. Well, you hit it on the head there. There was uh, obvious confusion there. And uh, Alan Moore had uh, a five metre radius round there. Should have taken a comfortable mark. But uh, it went for option and obviously through lack of talk. Interesting to see young Hussain with the blue hair out there. Now, his opposition are wearing blue. I wonder what's uh, the, the message behind that. Reverse psychology, is it, Bill? Ball stuck here on the half-back line. Ross comes away, kicks towards the boundary line. Oh, his judgment had to be spot on. He hit the line or just on the line, and it went over the boundary line for a throw-in. It's 70 metres out, Magpies. In attack, they trail, though. Darwin have kicked the first three scores of the match, and they've all been behinds. Throw in here. Fist from the back came from Bailey. Good handball out to Jock McLeod. They got to him, Clark. Handball to Malseed. Malseed kicks. Moore this time puts his hands at the footy. Couldn't take the mark. Knight charges out of defence. Oh, he's a great defender. Thumps it out long. Efren Tip and Woody in front position. Thomas Simon at the back. Ball knocked to ground. Jock McLeod is back there. Good handball from the ground. Another handball a little further. Simon quad caught and lost it. Efren Tip and Woody in the way here. Couldn't get to the footy. McLeod went in with the shepherd. Freed his teammate up the kick it out to Matty Stokes. He runs hard at the football as Matthew Stokes. Onto the right boot, despite the sliding effort to smother it from Ben Gallagher. Ball up the centre half back. Matty R. Matt Clever got it to Zaman. He lost the footy. Hard tackle over the top. Brett Forthyse. Stokes caught in a big tackle. They ride him into the ground. Darwin come away. Brian Ross under pressure. Up and under. Didn't travel the distance. Tyrrell with the push out. Kick further from Darwin up here. In the way though to take the mark back there was uh, Jerry Frank. Went to the centre of the ground. They've got extra players in there. Landed it right in the centre and got it to Salam Hassan. He went further upfield with a good kick. Good tackle from the back. Blake, no, he doesn't. The umpire says, go back, Malsey, and take the mark on the edge of the square. Oh, it's good footy, Bill. It is, Charlie, indeed. And uh, an incredible battle up there between Henschel and Matty Knight. And uh, Matty Knight to date probably having the better of it. And uh, such a different result to date than last time just two teams met when... Uh, Henschel probably had about three goals on the board by now. Qual took enormous risk there and almost got caught. Darwin under pressure. Free kick played. What for, Bill? Didn't pick it up. Yeah, I think he had an opportunity to get rid of the ball and uh, he opted not to. He took on the extra tackle and got pinged. Uh, not a lot in it. And one of those ones that could go either way. But uh, just when I said Henschel um, was getting done by Matty Knight, he's, uh, he's got in there probably post his first goal. Well, it wasn't his fault. Nah, true. Nothing, uh, nothing wrong with Matty Knight. And it's a good contest. There's a lot of body work going on behind play. And as I said, Bailey very close to Matty Armat in the midfield. So a lot of run on. Sorry, Bill. Trent Henschel, does he have any nerves? Kicks at goal. He's a youngster. Oh. He's in the post. Magpie Army erupts. What will they do if they kick a goal, Bill? <laughs> They'll pull the grandstand down. I think they thought it was a goal, Charlie, but um, we'll see Matty Knight bring it in. Should go long using this breeze and should hit the centre square, but uh, not a real lot of options downfield for him. He'll go for Gallagher. He has to wait a long time. Oh, very good hands, Gallagher. Got to it and broke away from Stokes and kicked it up over the wing. That's a good kick. Good work at the here. Let's Matty Armat run onto the footy. He left it behind. Well done, Brent Bailey. Got onto the right boot. Kicked it to the edge of the square. Maggie's there in number. Malseed was good. Running pass was Tyrrell. Ignored him. Went to Jock McLeod in the corridor. Jock McLeod can go short. Chips it in. In the way, bun. One hand on the footy. He'll run out. They grabbed him. He lost it when he was caught in the tackle. Chance here. This time. Henschel. Goal. Oh, 
that. She's a ferocious opener. Fierce opening, and uh, Hensel, we just mentioned him a couple of times. He gets a couple of kicks, and uh, the Magpie mascot there pretty happy with it. We have a look at the replay. It was a chip there. Jock McLeod went long, uh, long and short into the breeze, and uh, perhaps a mark that uh, should have been wrapped up there by Bunn, but um, an opportunist goal come out. Handball to Hensel, very good around the body. Snap kick, and he kicked the goal, and we know what a magic player this kid is. Matty Knight's done nothing wrong. He'd be disappointed with that. We're at the uh, nine and a half minute mark, and the first goal posted to the uh, Magpie side. Well, Bun should have wrapped up the mark. You've really got to wrap two hands around. Keegan from the middle, thumps it to ground, and then went to ground himself. Hard work being done there, Brent Forsyth, up towards the edge of the square here. Plenty of Darwin players here. Handball could have went to Ross, it didn't. Kick up field was pretty good. Swift takes a very good mark. Grab by Elwin Davey. Oh. Well, his teammate took his eyes off the footy. Uh, lucky to get away with this. Simon Mankara falls down and then gets up. Davey comes at it. At him, kicks down. One on one. Jeffrey and Durke. Ball knocked to ground down there. From the back, Durke. Couldn't get to the footy. Out comes Russell Jeffrey from centre half back. Kicks it to the middle of the ground. Two Maggies raffle it. They've left it behind. In goes Ryan Ayers looking for the footy. Oh, he won't get the free kick. Well, it's going to be a free kick down here, and it goes to Salim Hassan. Well, Ryan Ayers did everything right there, and um, if anything, the Palmerston player brought the ball in. If the free kick was there, it should have gone the other way for mine. Two number 11s on the other side of the ground there. Damien Zammett goes against Jerry Frank. Ball knocked out a little further. They get some assistance there. It comes in from Salim Hassan. Kick along the boundary line. Back goes Bun looking for the footy. Will he get there? Yes, he does. Takes on a player. Oh, he's lucky to get away. Now he does. Has the audacity to get a bounce and then kick with the right boot. Mick Williams front position. Good defensive work from the back was Drew Chappell. Ball on the ground. Darwin come late and over the top. Free kick. Well, he's yeah. evened it up, Charlie. I think he's evened it up from the one before. And the Blue Boys are happy. They've got a free kick. Tagging side at the centre. That's a poor kick too. It'll make uh, Ryan Ayers work very hard. He gets into space. Terrific balance, Ryan Ayres. Goes with a 50-metre kick down. Durko gets a long way under the footy. Russell Jeffrey outfoxed him. Metre or two back, read at best. Did the Magpie coach. And he's got to mark some uh, 20 metres out from the defensive goal. Squirts across field and kicked it out of bounds on the foot. No, a finger on it from uh, Steve Malseed. And, Charlie, I can tell you that uh, despite how good this oval looks, it is very greasy on top. I've seen plenty of players, particularly on the grandstand side, uh, slip as they uh, went for the ball and when they stop. Darwin don't have a ruckman. Keegan had to do the work there, and he did it for his teammates. Knocked it towards the boundary line. Now, Darwin need a ruckman to get down there. Bill, where is he? Well, I'll tell you what, just with Keegan playing that kick behind, he's doing it beautifully again. We know how good he is, and... Uh... It's just uh, they're aware of that, the, uh, the Darwin side, and um, I think Russell's out there rut rucking and uh, nowhere to be seen at this stage. Williams had to go and do it. Durke in space, left foot snap, misses, kicks it behind. Gee, I tell you what, he won the body contest with Russell Jeffrey, did uh, Gary Durke, didn't he? Yeah, Russell's a very experienced player, and one-on-one, uh, -on -one, pound for pound, there's no one better than him, and uh, very, very, he's lost nothing. He's, uh, he was a fantastic AFL player, he's brought all that to Darwin footy, and uh, very clever. I need a goal, the Buffaloes. Jock yes, McLeod just to believe. Off. Jock McLeod coming off. Charlie being replaced by um, Adamson, I think it is. Here's a go. Simon Mankara. Hurried his kick and kicked it behind as well. Well, the pressure is on, Bill. Let's put it down to that. It is, and uh, Mankara looked like he's hurt himself there, Charlie. And uh, they just need one of these snaps to come off. And if anyone uh, down, he looks like he's holding his groin region. They don't need this young fella to be injured, or it could be a knee. Well, it would be, be, be helpful if someone went out and had a look. They've left him there, writhing in agony as the Magpies come away through Alvin Davey. He got the kick just backward of the wing, a backward of uh, the half-back line, hand over the top there. Should have been a free kick, and it was. Well yeah. picked up uh, umpire Roberts because the arm was over the top of Jared Barrington. It was very well done, the umpire, wasn't it? Tyrrell was being just a little clever. Yeah, too right. A good pick up and quite often they let them go because... Um, you know, the, um, the Darwin player stood his ground, but um, good decision by the umpire. Barrington. Not a lot of uh, value in that kick, except Matty Armat can get there and take the mark on his chest, because everyone thought it was floating over the boundary line. Not now, enough. I'm a little worried, I can tell you, and Richard Russell, because he didn't go down and ruck, and now he's come off. Shane Stevens has gone on to do the ruck work, and um, Russell must be a little bit proppy in some region for him to come off like that. Great pass by Matty Armat, good vision. 
Mark Take and Damien Zammett within kicking distance. Sad sight behind him. As uh, Simon Munkara limps towards the boundary line. He may be okay though. He might just need a little bit of treatment. Damien Zammett, there he is with the footy. Five behinds, wasting the breeze to Buffaloes. Kick to Ryanair's, just had too much, was always going to have too much on it. Easy picking for the Maggies. Drew Chapel runs away and kicks it out wide. Sets it up for Dion Grant. Two to chase him, he's on the wing. Onto the right boot he goes. Clark gets in the way, drops the mark he should have taken, and then goes one way and then the other. Takes an eternity. Onto the left boot he goes. He was waiting upfield. He got it up there to Simon Quall. He left it behind. Adamson went in and got the hard footy. And in goes Bun. He lost the football. Darwin's starting to lose confidence here. They need to kick a goal and get into it. Half kick that didn't get away. Darwin desperate to get it through. Jared Barrington gets to the middle. All Maggie's there. Alan Moore the only one to beat. Has he got the leg speed? He's a metre or two at the back. He waits for, uh, for Nathan Grant to come at him. Little kick over the top. Corey Cuno. Player in support is Brent Bailey. Can they get it to him? Darwin go back. Good work done back there, Ben Gallagher. Thumps it out to Matty Armat. He'll take the mark on his chest. Wonderful, wonderful work, Darwin in defence. Set up. Big tackle. That is a magnificent tackle. And now the push has been played. Darwin will get the free kick. Well, comedy of errors here. Alan Moore was fantastic in the uh, earlier stages. Took on two players, beat them. Matty Armat took uh, advantage of the situation, played on, give it to Moore. Moore was cleaned up and then a silly reversal. Things you just don't need in a grand final. Darwin desperate for a goal. Maggie's have got one. Kick for McMaster, the big young fella. Takes the mark on his chest as Brenton McMaster. What's the chance of the one-on-one? -on -one? Oh, he got plenty of elevation. Durkay back position. Russell Jeffrey with the fist. Durkay in looking for it. They're holding on to him. He should get a free kick. He doesn't. Ryan Ayres, left foot kick at goal. That's a magnificent mark in defence. And they'll break away from defence here. It was terrific work back there from Salim Hassan. Squirts it out wide to the far side of the ground. And away goes Dion Kelly from the back pocket. Wants Adamsel short of the wing. Takes the mark in front of the grandstand. 1-1 one, one to five points. And the ball is out of bounds, I fear. And umpire will bring it back and throw it in. Charlie, I can tell you that uh, McMaster's is on for Zamet. And uh, as he came off there, uh, Mick Athanasia came down and met him on the sidelines. Told him he was very unhappy about something that happened in the back line there. And as a result, he's having a rest on the bench. Glenn, see if you can find out the extent of the injury to Simon Munkar, if you can. Ball on the far side of the ground. Darwin here under pressure. Keegan with the kick. Buffalo's in the way, though. Shane Stevens. Ruckman who comes off the bench, has the mark. Backward of the wing, far side of the ground. High kick down on the forward line. Williams went high, didn't get to the footy. Kick comes out. Up went one hand down there from uh, Jerry Frank. Ball stuck in the forward pocket. In comes Gary Durkay looking for it. He wants the footy and he can't get it and he's getting frustrated. Big tackle out there on the far side of the ground. Umpire Roberts says play on. Darwin with numbers. Can they get the kick away from here? They can't. Now the Magpie defence gets there. Russell Jeffrey was magnificent. Gave a cool handball. Slick little kick up. And the Magpies relieve the pressure again. They're standing up to everything Darwin's throwing at them. That's a magnificent tackle. And the free kick's got to go to Darwin. Ryan Ayres, left foot kick. Darwin with extra players. Durkay got there. Can he get the kick away? He tried to kick it off the ground. Davey comes away from defence. Oh, a chance there for Darwin. Williams went in looking for the footy. Efren Tippen, what he wants it. He can't get it. Pack of players over the top. Oh, free kick play, Darwin get it. Davey parked over the footy. Wouldn't throw it out. Efren Tippen Woody will get the free kick directly out in front, 40 metres out. Well, it was a congested set up there, and if you drag the football in, you're going to get pinged, and uh, some of these players want to go on with it. Adam Roberts laying, laying the law down there. You tell them, Adam, get out and play footy, boys. There's a premiership up for grabs. It's not a boxing match, and uh, I don't think Buffs have actually uh, settled right down yet. There's a, still a little bit of nerves. They post a goal, and uh, they might end up with a couple on the board before uh, the quarter time siren. They need this to believe. So we get close to 20 minutes. Efren Tippen Woody kicks a goal and kicks it.
Well, it took them almost 20 minutes, Bill, to get there first, and they had the use of the breeze. They've certainly done a lot of attacking, and uh, we have a look at the replay here, and um, you wouldn't back this young fellow to miss from this distance in a million years, and uh, split the middle to the accolades of the Buffalo crowd. It's brought them to life, and uh, but a very, very entertaining game. Some fantastic tackling, some good shepherding, a little one presenters, the one-on-ones, as we mentioned before, Alan Moore was fantastic, and... Uh, you know, it's, um, it's a battle of inches in this early stage, but um, I, th I think um, Buffs need to get one or two more with the aid of this breeze. Keegan has to do the ruck work. Matty Armat caught for a little bit of pace there. Bailey got to the footy. In he went and got it. Simon Quall, did he get clear? No, Corey Cunoff read it best and got the handball. Kicked out wide to the wing, far side of the ground. Salem has Sam in front position. Left foot kick brings it back in field. Stevens got there. Couldn't spoil the mark, though. Grant comes away with the kick. Up towards the 50-metre line. They grabbed Alan Moore high. Play on, says the umpire. Ross was terrific. Oh, Brian Ross was brilliant. Set it up to the wing. They're going to have to work hard here. Gallagher. Gallagher. You let your teammates down. You were too slow. Kick from Davey. Stokes with hands on the footy. Clark comes in looking for it. Magpies and plenty of them. Chance here for a goal. Adamsall down in there. By himself caught and lost it. Oh, should have been penalised. Pack of players over the top, I can tell you. Ben Gallagher, he was very slow picking up the footy on the wing. They should have broke away Darwin, but instead they're under pressure at the other end of the ground. As we have a look at Mick Athanasia on the screen. Matty Knight's three sensational tackles in the last uh, 30 seconds of play. Jeez, he's come out, he's followed Henschel out and just done some incredible things. Magpies deep in attack. Tyrrell grabs it. Smothering effort on the footy. They try to work their way around. Snap around the body from Dion Grant. What did he do? He kicked a goal. That's what he done. Maggie's have got two. Well, they're the type of things that break your heart. Buffs have been doing all the attacking. They've, uh, they've got five behinds on the point. Magpies take it up there and um, without too much uh, difficulty at all, kick a goal like that. As we have a look at the replay, Terrell uncontested in the ruck, missed the kip. Great ground uh, level play there. Kick around the body and only just snuck in in the end, but uh, great goal to the Maggies and uh, good settler just before, not long before the quarter time interval. So Richard Russell goes on and Shane Stephen comes off. Russell to ruck against Keegan. They're running two against uh, the big Magpie Ruckman. Ball knocked to ground. Simon Quag got it and lost it. In goes Ryan Ayres for the footy. Now he gets onto his right foot. Foot, not his normal kicking foot. Pedro Stefanodakis bounces over the top. Gary Durko takes him on, gives a handball here. A little kick off the ground. Brilliant goal. Magnificent goal from the Buffaloes. Kicked by Damien Zammett. Well, what an answer that was, Charlie. That's what footy's all about. If you can answer a goal like that, emphatic fashion, it was just sensational as we uh, approach the 22-minute mark. We'll have a look at this replay. Ryan Ayres was terrific in the centre. Got that long kick out, as we've said on many occasions. Bounce over the back. Uh, the big fella, Gary Durke, waited behind. Clever handball. Zammett, quick left. Golf chipped through. But um, we've spoken about this in, uh, in the previous encounter. The only team all year to be able to match it up in the middle. The only team to be able to um, uh, worry the stats in terms of centre clearances is the Darwin side. They did that beautifully. Ayres is terrific in there. Adamsall in there. So too foresight. Free kick goes. Magpies will get it. Might have been Bunn that broke across the line. An umpire Bain has pinged him for it. They gave it to Corey Cunoff. The kick to centre half forward. Tyrrell has front position. Clark from the back. Knocked the ball to ground. Clark has to kick it off the ground. This time it's sat for Gallagher. Can he redeem himself on the wing? Yes, he does. It's a lovely kick for McMaster. McMaster got there. Good knock from Alwyn Davy. Caught from the back. Stefan Adarkas slung him to ground. Williams will get there first. Mick Williams, onto the right boot he goes, sets it up, Durke versus Jeffrey, pushing from the back was Durke, ball on the ground here, chance for Darwin again, can they get the handball out, snapshot, into the goal square they go, smothering effort from uh, Magpies down there, it came uh, off the pads if you like and threw for a behind bill. He did, he padded up to that one and uh, geez, they've had some wasted opportunities, they had numbers there, Durke was in the box seat, he had Russell in front of him, Russell Jeffrey in front of him, Russell couldn't come back, couldn't push back but... Um, They've just made a meal of some of these forward thrusts, but the long kicks are what I like. Mick Williams on that occasion, Ryan Ayres a time before. Time may beat him with the aid of this breeze, nevertheless. Chapel's kick wants Keegan. He has good position, the big man. Got there, they've knocked it to ground. Simon Quall burst onto the footy. Little chip over the top. It was bad. 
It was very bad kick. He should have got it to Durkay. They should be kicking for goal now. But instead, they've given the ball to the Magpies. They come away with Jerry Frank. Straight to the middle he goes. Corey Kunoff gets there in front of Stefan Adakis. Backward of the centre. Kicks it out wide. Darwin under pressure now. Down in their forward line because this ball will come in off Tyrrell. Tyrrell gets it now. Long way out from goal. Goes back. Kicks high. Ross in the way. Poor kick at the other end of the ground. And Brian Ross takes the mark in the back pocket. Squirts it up for Russell. Takes it very easy, does Russell. Send the message out to Darwin. You've got the breeze. Move it quickly. Back goes Russell. High kick. McMaster, good position. They'll come on him quickly. Running across the face was uh, Mick Williams. Gets to 50. Kicks poorly. And kicks it out of bounds. Well, another wasted opportunity, perhaps. A little bit of a missed kick by Mick there. I can tell you one thing. Jerry, Flank, uh, Jerry Frank in defence is a bit proppy, and uh, he was very hesitant. Didn't even uh, attempt to go towards Williams on that occasion. He got up some five minutes ago pretty gingerly, and he's uh, carrying a leg injury of some description. Siren at quarter time. What a battle. We've just played the first quarter, and, uh, gee, I'm feeling it. Two goals, six to Buffaloes. Maggie's 2-1. Check the stats, Bill. Oh, well, the goal kickers first. We have a look at the goal kickers. Uh, four individual goal kickers, Henschel and Grant for the uh, Magpie side, and with the Buffaloes, Tip and Woody and Zamet. And I wonder uh, how the injury is on young Tip and Woody. And the uh, the stats should be pretty even, and, uh, and they are at that. Kicks, nothing in the kicks. The uh, the mark slightly uh, edging towards the Magpies. Handballs as well. Free kicks, nothing in it. And hit outs, uh, and surprisingly, perhaps, not surprisingly, it is 11, and uh, Keegan, the big fella, getting plenty of hand on the ball. So a good first quarter in the grand final, and the score shows us that uh, Darwin are in front, 2-6 to 2-1. Territory footy from the vault is thanks to these valued partners. We're here for when the heavens open and the winds howl. We're here for when the water just won't stop. We're here for the wet, and we're here for the dry. We're here because we know there's nowhere else you'd rather be. And there's nowhere else we'd rather be either. TIO Home Insurance. We're for Territorians. Time to escape cause I'm in need of warmer weather. Sail upon the stream to find there's someplace better And I'm going far and wide Ooh. Great Northern Brewing Co. The beer from up here. before making an investment decision. The time to kickstart your business is now. Get your message across with the experienced local TV production team at Kick Digital. Cost effective, rapid turnaround, exceptional service. Kick Digital, television production, energised. Quarter time, I got over to the uh, Buffalo's huddle, and Mick Athanasia was very calm with the players. He said it was a grand final first quarter, the nerves are out of the way. He wants his players to attack the uh, goals up what he calls the attacking flank. That's the grandstand side. He said, run the ball up, get it to Durke, and take each quarter, or take the game quarter by quarter. That's their plan. Uh, Simon Mankara looking okay. Uh, he did get, uh, it was in the dugout for a little while, but very little treatment. They say he'll be back on the ground. Thanks, Glenn. Well, play about to get underway here in this second quarter. Let's see how good the Maggies are with the breeze. Knocked to the middle. McLeod got front position. They came hard over the top. Robbie Swift, what a great battle that is. McLeod kicks it off the outside of the right boot. And good fortune, it landed in the hands of Dion Grant, who gave it off to Stokes from a long way out. Pelted at goal. I think he's kicked it. Yes, he has. He knows where they are. Well, that's how you use the breeze, don't you? And they've obviously... Uh 
had a good look at Bubsk and had a good look at this brief in the first quarter and uh, they'll be looking to make every host a winner here. Good chip kick out by McLeod. Matty Stokes ran by beautifully. He's let, let sail from 40 metres, made no mistake. They've, they've kicked that one in about 15 seconds flat. So they snatch the lead away by a point. This ruck work is important. Keegan now will run hard at the footy and he'll have those players charging through McLeod and Forsyth and Malseed in there as well. Ball in the middle. Here's Malseed with it. Slings the handball out. Swift has to do the hard work. Kicks it off the ground. Ross will provide the shepherd here. He does. Lets his teammate in. That's through Ben Gallagher up towards the forward line. And you can see just how strong that breeze is, Bill. It is very hard going to left of screen. That is, Charlie, and uh, good work, though. They're going to keep the ball low going down there. And again, we just saw Jerry Frank meander over, if you like. A happy supporter there. And uh, But, um, yeah, they've, they've got some work to do into this Breeze Buffaloes. They've got to stay in touch with this game, and it's a very, very important quarter for them. Big quarter of footy in front of us. Keegan got the tap down. Ball forced towards the boundary line far side. They kept it back in play. Chance here for uh, Mankara, who's back on the field. Left foot kick. Williams waits at the back. In goes Keegan to get it. Big handball over the top. They knock it on a little further. Matty Armat gets it. Got the ball out somehow. High kick from McMasters. One on one here. Williams took his eye off the footy. Got to watch it, Mick. Handball came back to... Uh, Davey here as he goes to ground, pushed out a little bit further here. Now they can run away. Dion Kelly kicks it up towards the 50 metre line. Stokes in front position. Plenty of Darwin players back there. Moore with it. Four ball forced towards the boundary line and over for a throw in. And Darwin are going to find pressure. They'll find out a lot about it in, the, in this next five minutes, I would think. Well, it was taken out of defence a bit too easy. Big fella Keegan bent down and he had, it uh, seemed like an eternity to pick the ball up and do something with it. They've got to be a bit more desperate across their half forward line, the buffs, especially Good. into this breeze. Clark tackled, kick off the ground by uh, Simon Quoll. A little bit of desperation showed in that. Now a throw in. It's up towards the wing, between the wing and the half forward line for the Magpies. They've kicked the only goal of this quarter. A good one to Matty Stokes. Ball tapped down. In goes Edward Darcy. Kick from hard up along the boundary line. Ball kept in play. Moore gets there. Runs along the boundary line. Magpies go in and get it. Lindsay Bunn got one hand on the footy. There was a push. Advantage played and Stokes are running and kick another goal here for the Magpies. Runs a long way, shapes the handball, and he just kicks it in. Because he didn't quite know what to do there for a while, but he ran in and kicked the goal in the end. Well, let me dispel any myths of uh, the fact that this young fellow missed the last game, the uh, second sec, yeah, second semi for... Uh, we have a look at the replay here. Work at ground level, free kick was played, and Stokes took off, and he just said, uh, thank you very much. Shaped up to give the handball threw the, uh, the player away from him and uh, great goal, clever player but uh, he's showing no signs of missing that second semi-final great little player, perhaps even playing with a, um, a partially mended bone in his wrist, a lot of guts, big future great goal for the Magpies well they're switched on the Maggies, no doubt about that, Keegan from the middle, got there and tapped it away handball out again and they keep the pressure on here, Alan Moore gets in the way and holds the play up on the half back line Clark runs past him. Tyrrell can't touch him until the umpire says play on. And the left foot kick now. Magpies in front position, Dion Kelly. Darwin looked just a little flat at the moment. McLeod with a high kick. Gets it out wide. Davey under the footy. Caught it and the loss of Jerry Frank. It is in fact. And now comes Lindsay Bunn. Kick to the middle to Russell. Had to stretch and stretch a long way. Then runs to the edge of the square and then kicks long. McMaster in good position. Did he get there? They're holding on to Mankara. No whistle. Gee, was unlucky, Mankara, because they were holding on to him. And he has blistering pace, uh, Bill. And if they can just grab him just before he runs, they can take that advantage away from him. The umpires have to watch it carefully. Well, I can tell you what, Ben Schmidt was in exactly the same angle as we were. He had every, he had a clear vision of that, and why he didn't give that free kick, I don't know, but um, Munkar, Munkar, very unlucky on that occasion. McMaster slung away and kicked it out of bounds on the full. No system up in the Darwin, line, uh, Darwin forward line, Bill. That's the problem at the moment. No, they have struggled, and uh, Palmerston working back. Keegan blocks that up beautifully. Always congested, and... Uh, no system, hard to work into this breeze, all the same. 
Now a chance, McMaster, one way and then the other. You get in trouble here. Gave it to Quall. Left foot kick from Quall. Oh, wobbled, wobbled like a caught fish, Bill, and went through, went out of bounds on the full. <laughs> oh, where I grew up, we called them mongrel punts, but that was a shocker. That was an absolute shocker as Russell Jeffrey brings the ball back in, chips over the top to Chapel. Darwin know they've got to kick a goal here. Maggie's have kicked two in the second quarter. Kicking with the breeze. Salem Hassan wants it. He's screaming for it. It goes in his direction. Fist was from Ayers. Knocked it to ground. Salem Hassan got there. Cruised away with the left boot. Kicked it up into the forward line. Moore was fantastic. Terrific play, Alan Moore. Left foot kick. Has he got it to step in the darkest? No, they got across in front of him, did Tyrrell. Quag gets to Tyrrell. Goes down with a footy. He wants a free kick and he's got to get it. Oh, he decision. was very lucky, Quag. He was very, very unlucky, Tyrrell, because Quag's hand went in, Bill, and pushed the ball underneath Tyrrell. Yeah, well, that's, uh, that's clever, but... Um... Up into the forward line. Chance here for Darwin. Mick Williams, 30 metres out, 25 metres out, directly in front. Good long kick by Quall, and the breeze just seemed to stop there for a moment. Uh, got a lot of penetration. Mick Williams, one out, good position, great mark, and if Mick kicks this, if ever they uh, wanted a, a guy to kick a goal to lift the team, this bloke does. And um, very, very important kick this one. Very important in the context of this quarter and in the overall outcome of the game. Number 13, co-captain, runs in and kicks a goal. Wobbly kick, but gets him six points. They're rotating the, uh, the ruckman on the bench. The, um, as we suggested earlier, they've just had a change. Uh, Russell coming off and Shane Stevens going on. Stefan Adarkas also coming on and Zamet back onto the ground. So if, we'll just have a look at this replay here. Mick Williams um, it wobbled pretty funny off the boot. It was not dissimilar to young Simon Qualls kick a bit earlier, but that's um, contributed to the breeze. But a great, much-needed goal to the Darwin side. And they need to follow that up with another one. And... Um, just ensure that um, with the aid of this breeze that Maggie's don't blow this out in any fashion. 3-6 plays 4-1. One. one point the difference. Maggie's more accurate. Keegan to ruck from the middle. Stevens beats him and taps it. They're looking for the influence of Matty Armat. McLeod was able to get the handball away. It was a good one. Clark has front position and then lost it to Tyrrell. Tyrrell with a second grab at the footy. Thumps it into the forward line. Hand on the footy, I think. No, it hit the goalpost. And uh, umpire Mick Stone says it's a behind, and he's absolutely right. Well, wonderful kick there by Tyrrell. He summed it up. He used the breeze. He popped it up, and it brought it back beautifully. Just got an unkind bounce towards the end there. He put his hand up. He thought he'd won Lotto. Not to be, as we see Matty Knight bring the ball back in. Matty Knight's now to his left are all the supporters for the Darwin side, and he'll go in their direction from the edge of the kick kickoff square. Two on one here. Clark was good. Used to... A little push out pretty effectively on Tyrrell and then thumped it up to the wing. McMaster gets there, but that was a terrific mark. That is a wonderful, wonderful mark by Salem Hassan, who was uh, really stamping his mark on this game. Up towards the forward line, half forward line, Clark stops him again. He's been fantastic, this player. He's been underrated and uh, he's been a performer all year and just a very sturdy, strong centre-half back. Now well, he's given it away again. It's the same result. They're kicking to each other. The two number 21s sharing the footy. Will he kick it to Clark again? Yes. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Well, the two 21s. I tell you what, if you can get a number 21 in your lucky numbers, put it down. This time the ball goes to ground. Getting away is Dion Grant. Stokes in front position. Gallagher got there. Interfered with Stokes. No free kick. Caught from behind Gallagher. Tackle around the legs, that's a free kick. Gallagher gives the handball off. Stevens comes away, the big man, kicks it up. Poor kick in the end. And rolls over the boundary line, the far side of the ground, in front of uh, Efren Tippenwoody. I don't think I've ever seen that kick to kick in the, in the fashion that panned out. That was just an extraordinary sequence of events. You can have a raffle tonight or a lotto ticket. Ensure to uh, have number 21 amongst your numbers. Cross number 21. Shane Stevens. Another kick. McMaster's. Gee, Stevens has to work on those kicks. That was poor again. 
In goes Williams, sticks the boot out, knocks it back in field. McMaster under pressure. They scrag him. He lost it. Fell caught. Azama caught in the tackle. Efren Titmuri lost the footy. Play on, says the umpire. Tempo lifting here. Ball knocked. Ross in space onto the right boot. Beautiful kick. Ball gets over the top. Simon Mankara under pressure. Holding him was Alan Davey. Kick out wide here. Alan Moore's a long way back. So is Ross. Will they close quickly here on Nathan Grant? He'll get it over the top and use the loose man. Clark's going to have to do the hard work. Will he do it? Well, he came in with a hard and late tackle. And he's given away a free kick to Steve Mousey. Crude tackle from the big number 21. Well, the coach told me before the game, sir, if they're going to make him, if they're going to have a kick, make him earn it. And Jeffrey Clark did on that occasion. Young McMaster's got to tack the ball a little bit harder than what he's been doing too. I know he's young, but he's got to um, just attack it with a little bit more vigour. Now, they just stood there and let Nathan Grant run down there. It was so very, very obvious. He just, he ran past three Darwin players as if to say, I'm running into the space, fellas. And they just ignored him. And the ball finished up with him. So Nathan Grant, 50 metre line there, joining the boundary line. I'll back him from here, Charlie. I'll back him from here. Kicks it goal. Wants the breeze to bring it back in. Ball knocked away and hits the behind post, so it's got to be a throw-in. So Darwin might have been better off conceding the behind there, Bill, but it's a throw-in alongside the behind post. Well, that just shows a true indication of the breeze. He, uh, he allowed for it. He almost looked like he was kicking that one towards the tip of the square. Came back right in and uh, right on the line, but um, desperate times here for Darwin. They've got to clear this. It's a good battle here. Henshaw from a standing start. What did he do? He can do anything. He can do everything. He's kicked a goal. Well, uh, what an opportunist. This bloke can take big marks. He can kick him from 50. But at ground level, we've spoken about this so many times. If second and third efforts, that was a first effort. But his ground level play for a six foot three kid is just um, something to be seen. And uh, he will go down south. We'll have a look at the replay here. We'll see a boundary throw in. Jostling there. And uh, Bailey it was over the back. We just see the boot of Henschel coming in there. And he just picked it up all in the one motion. Got boot to ball and, and very, very much an opportunist goal. So, Glenn, what do you make of it all? Oh, Charlie, it's, it's a great game, isn't it? Goal for goal. Can't get much better than this. Corey Kunoff got the tap back out of the centre. Thumping kick. Tyrrell in good position here. Clark was fantastic. Got the fist. Did he knock it far enough? No, he didn't. Now he comes in with a great tackle. Ball stays in play. Alan Moore over the top will get it back from Barrington. Ayres provides the shepherd. They go to the boundary line. That's got to be a free kick. It's not a mark. And it will go to Damien Zammett. Blistering, wonderful football from Darwin as they charge out of defence along the boundary line. Oh, it was courageous stuff. Damien Zammett now goes from just backward of the wing up to Keegan. The big man just stands there and gave the handball off. Another handball unleashes a player running away there with Thomas Simon. Went out wide, only got it out there to Bun. Bun onto the right boot. He'll go over the top and try and get it off to Swift. It'll bounce for Swift. Jerry Frank will come at him, get him from behind. He knocks it back in play to Swift. And then it's forced over the boundary line. Well, Jerry Frank looked, as you rightly called some time ago, as he had an injury, but he found some legs then. He certainly did. No sign of, uh, of any uh, injury on that instance. He really found the turn of speed. Great work, Jerry Frank. Adensel's got to do the ruck work against Stevens. Ball knocked the ground. In goes uh, Swift looking for it. Caught it, lost it, gave the handball out. Corey Cunoth gets it. Hard along the boundary line, brings it back in field to Jerry Frank. Then finds out he's got more time than he really needed. And then went too long and got it to Clark over the top. Clark's kick, he was holding on. They were holding on to uh, the player out there, Stevens. Stevens gets the free kick, brings it into Zamet. Zamet lifting his work rate, lifting the Buffalo. 5 2 plays 3 6. The margin is eight points. Darwin now to go into attack. Zamet goes back, thumping kick. Big pack down in the forward line, gets over the top. Nick Williams gets to the footy. Davey takes him on. Williams does well, gets there. Handballs and kicks it off the ground. In went Simon Munkara. Just couldn't get it. Gets to Williams. Snaps off the goal. Simon Crow. He's done what Trent Henschel did only a moment ago. And the Blue Army goes crazy. Well, what a goal. Mick Williams responsible for that on two or three efforts. Great work here. He took it to ground, looked up, had a look, had no option, took it on, kicked it off the ground, and have a look at this work from Simon Cole. Great pick up again, Williams. 
a leg break and he's kicked a beautiful goal. Williams was fantastic. He was very clever, showed his experience and put that goal down to Mick Williams. He wants to go out in fashion, this bloke. He uh, hasn't got a lot of football years left in him. He's been a stalwart for this Buffalo side and he'd love nothing more than uh, to finish with a big smile on his face today. From the centre, Matty Armat has been just a little quiet in this match. They want him to fire. Swift been fantastic. Hit Williams uh, in an area you don't want to be hit with Bill with a flying footy. Big tackle on there. Ross goes in. Squeeze the kick out somehow. Alan Davey, who's been brilliant in defence here, takes them on and runs away. Left foot kick to Jerry Frank. Took the chance. Jerry Frank dropped it. Now they've lost the footy. Little kick over the top. McMasters. Oh, it was a bad kick. McMasters didn't have a chance. Russell Jeffrey runs away with it. Kicks it up to the wing. Holding on to Berrington. No free kick. Knocks it to ground, Berrington. Russell Jeffrey is there. Gives the handball back to McLean. McLean from backward at the centre. Thumping kick up the centre half forward. At the back with Barn. He lost it. Stokes. Over the leaf ball. Runs in and kicks a goal. Sensational. Magnificent football from young Matthew Stokes. Well, they had three players there, the Buffalo side, and Bun dropped an absolute basketball there. He dropped it, and uh, Barrington going crook perhaps should have been paid. McLean, a long kick, and that's what you can do with it, Breeze. The kick travelled 60-odd metres into the wind. Have a look, three players, Bun dropped it, three, four Buffalo players, and this young bloke, we've spoken so highly of him, an opportunist, picked it up, made no mistake. Mick Williams turned the ball over in the other end, and Charlie will forgive him on this occasion because it was suffering from um, having been caught in the Mick Whip with a uh, million mile an hour kick off the ground by Matty Armat and uh, Mick was a little bit off balance but a great uh, opportunist rebounding goal by the uh, Palms side. They're doing everything right, the Maggies. Ball up in the middle, Stevens knocks it. Swift's been fantastic. Drives them back into, into attack again. Up towards the 50 metre line. Fist came over the top. Matty Armat there, free kick picked out of it. And the Magpies will get it at centre-half back. Jerry Frank out to the right at right angles. Now they're invited to play on. McLean is there. Went over the top. Salam Hassan waited for it. Ross closes on him. Kick into the forward line. Trent Henshaw. Moore with a handball. Barrington. Cool is Barrington. Good kick out wide. Forsyth versus Swift. Swift got it in his bootlaces and then lost the mark he should have grabbed. Magpies come away with it. On the rebound, Darwin making mistakes here and letting the Maggies in. And Edward Darcy has it. As the whistle goes, there's a blood rule, I think. Let's just stay with it. Yes, there is a blood rule. Let's just wait for it. Player coming off. Nathan Grant, I think yeah. it is, Charlie. And, uh... It is Grant, yes. He's coming off the blood rule, as you rightly said. So they're swinging the changes, too, I have to say. Uh, both teams, Durke on and Durke off, that's what we've seen. Also, Richard McLean's on uh, for his first run. And if we uh, go back to the last time we saw McLean, he was very dominant in the forward line, kicking four goals. It's a strong breeze, and there's a big storm off to the airport end to our right, to right of screen. And if the Magpies can grab a three or four goal lead, they'll be hard to, to pull back. Edward Darcy thumps a goal. Big kick, drifts off to the right and goes through for a behind. Well, that just shows uh, how strong that breeze is. For a young fellow who uh, would normally struggle from the 50 metre line, he's kicked that well and truly outside. It carried comfortably. Just a little bit too much uh, biased in the end. Night short to Moore. Russell has to do all the work by himself. Ryan Ayres. Keegan got in the way as he tried to skip the handball over to Gallagher. And Keegan put the big arms up and smothered it and knocked it to the boundary line. And another promising move from the Darwin side, thwarted by some very desperate defensive work from the Magpies. Keegan saying, who's rucking against me? Richard Russell says, I'll come from behind. Tap down. Kick off the ground from Swift. Corey Cunoff runs onto the footy here. Quad will close on him. He got, it, got away from him a little too easily. Brought it back into uh, the forward line again. At the back with Henschel. Got to the footy. Oh, you're not going to play that as a mark. Surely not. Well, let's have a look at it if we've got it. Um... Certainly he had more of it than anyone else. We'll have a look at this replay and um, let that be the judge. He had a fair bit of it. But uh, if you're going to pay that one, the one that they got a goal before that, you had to have paid that too. And the Buffett boys knew that. They were going crook. The one that Bun dropped before that, I think he had every bit as much, if not more of it. The luck of the game, these things happen. The umpires make these decisions uh, spontaneously, as we see Matty Armat coming off. And uh, it's a worrying sign. 
He, went he hasn't, hasn't played his normal game. He may be injured. Injured. Stay with Henschel. He's got two. Kick from 48 metres. It's a beautiful kick, isn't it? It's a beauty. It's a big goal. And Henschel gets his third. Well, he gives him plenty of height, and uh, the height have been uh, drawing the ball across, but he might just kick it above the breeze, perhaps, young Trent. But um, that's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes, and uh, if you're the recipient of the free kick, you'll see Cornoff here. Curry get a beautiful blind turn there, long kick, and uh, Trent Henshaw set himself from a long way away. First grab, it was perhaps touched a couple of times on the way through, and um, very, very lucky to get the goal, but as we say, as we say, you make your own luck at the finals. He made no mistake with the, with the kick. And um, just the ledger tipping towards the Palmerston side and little one-on-ones that will tap out of the pack. Goals like that, um, they can either make a break or in a final situation. Ten shots each at goal. More accurate. The Magpies. Ross has to do some work here. They're running like they can smell a grand final, but Maggie's already. Barrington has to work. And then kicks under desperation and rolls it out to the far side of the ground. It stays in play here. Berrington went in looking for it again. At the back, Ross. High kick. Keegan will get in the way here. Too big, too strong. And Red at best, the big man. And then kicks it up and under. Clark says, I marked it. And he'll get it. His effort this quarter has been pretty good, Clark. Probably their best defender back there. 7-3 plays 4-6. Magpies with maybe just one finger around the, the Premiership Cup. Free kick to Darwin in the middle. Richard Russell. They want a goal. They need it and they need it now. And we've gone on into time on in this second quarter. As Russell has it. He'll just go short. Ryan Ayres. More runs for him out wide. Durkay's down in the forward line. McMaster's is the target. It'll drop a little short and Keegan... Well, he's reading it best. He knows it's dropping short. And he just keeps the ball in front of him and then runs at it, Bill. Yeah, look, he's just been brilliant. You can see that sort of thing setting up. He just plays that kick behind like nobody else in the competition. And uh, they've got to wake up to that, the Buffaloes. Russell, he just waited. And then he got it. And then he just delicately chipped it up into the forward line. McMaster's one way and then the other. Oh, the handball just had too much on it. His teammate left it behind. Ross has to do some more work on the far side of the ground. This time beaten for it. Ball comes back into the corridor. Ayres versus Corey Cunard. Corey Cunard recovers best and runs away from Ayres and kicks it up into the forward line. McLean runs at the footy. Knocks it out in front of him towards the boundary line. Tried to keep it back in play and couldn't. It's gone over the boundary line and it'll be thrown in. Well, just some little one-on-ones. Uh, we just saw Ryan Ayres go up against Corey uh, Turnoff in the air, and uh, Ryan didn't hang on to it. Corey was too good at ground level, and it's just been the story of this quarter. Uh, the luck and the, the bounce of the ball seem to have gone the mark, Magpie's way, but take nothing away from them. They've been terrific. Stokes got away, and he might have hurt himself there as he went down. He might have hurt his shoulder. Might be that wrist again, Charlie. Gee, he fell awkwardly, I can tell you that. Let's hope he's OK. I think he'd have to rip it off his hand to get him off the ground. And he's showing signs of being very tough about it all. This man's been good, hasn't he? He's been terrific. Salam Hassan. But this time the hands don't let him down. Now they've got four or five players, Darwin. All standing short of where this ball's going to go. And what they needed was it was the ball to be knocked back to them so they could run on it, but it didn't quite work out like that. Well, you called that spot on, and the, the viewers are not going to see that on telly. There were four Buffaloes in a radius of 15 minutes, all standing there catching their breath. And uh, the sign of a good team is to make options for you, especially when you kick it in the breeze, make options and uh, uh, make a signal that you want the ball, and uh, they just wasted that opportunity. Had the numbers. And Keegan is beautifully positioned back here. If Darwin get a hurry kick, he will cut it off. Into the middle, handball to McLean, caught, and then Clark comes across the front, and then just not able to keep it in, runs it over at the 50 metre line. They're looking up at the clock, Darwin, they want the siren to go, they want to go in and get some words of wisdom from uh, Mick Athanasia at half time. Well, it's certainly not beyond them, but uh, they don't want to be looking at the clock, they want to ensure that uh, Magpies don't kick another goal here, and uh, we call this red time, it's a very important part of the game. Again, Clark saves them. 
gets to the footy, handball to Swift, he takes them on and then breaks away, kicks it out for Efren Tip and Woody, he'll have to work with Thomas Simon, takes it on the chest and breaks away on the wing, kicks it upfield, drops it at the uh, feet of a teammate up there, kick was ordinary though, he should have got it up a little bit further than Manuel Burke, he didn't and Darwin give, Darwin give away the chance they had, it's been a big quarter from the Maggies, as the ball thumped back into the centre as the siren goes. And they'd be pretty happy with that quarter. A big quarter from them. They kick five goals and they leave at half time. Seven three to four six. A little bit of the goal kickers here in the, in the single biggest game of the year. That boy Henschel's come back into fashion beautifully with three goals, as has Matty Stokes, and they've been electrifying Dion Grant with a lone goal to make up the seven for the Magpies. Tip and Woody, Mick Williams, Zammett, and Paul one apiece for the Buffaloes. Bill, what are the stats tell us here? Well, let's have a look at the stats, and I wouldn't imagine much in it. And, uh, we see the kicks in favour of the Buffaloes. Marks dead even, and um, yeah, all in all, they're pretty even. The handballs slightly in front uh, with the Magpies. Free kicks, nothing in it. Hit outs have evened themselves up um, for a lot of hard work, and through Keegan playing largely behind the game. So, um, very even stats. Good game at half time. Yes, even on the stats board. Not so on the scoreboard, though. 15 points is the margin at halftime. 7-3, the Maggies. 4-6, the Buffaloes. Territory footy from the vault is thanks to these valued partners. We're here for when the heavens open. And the winds howl. We're here for when the water just won't stop. We're here for the wet. And we're here for the dry. We're here because we know there's nowhere else you'd rather be. And there's nowhere else we'd rather be either. TIO Home Insurance. We're for Territorians. Time to escape cos I'm in need of warmer weather. Sail upon the stream to find there's someplace better and I'm Far and wide. Right, Northern Brewing Co. The beer from up here. before making an investment decision. The time to kickstart your business is now. Get your message across with the experienced local TV production team at Kick Digital. Cost effective, rapid turnaround, exceptional service. Kick Digital, television production energised. Well, you, you can see that storm over there to our right. And Bill Martin, will it hit us? Well, I hope not. I hope it's been a good spectacle today. I hope it stays away and... Uh, has the wet conditions last week taken anything out of the Buffalo legs? Well, the task for the Buffaloes, they'd want to kick the first goal of this third quarter, otherwise they are going to be in dire straits. Ball up into the forward line. Maggie start as they finish the second quarter. Full of running. Little handball came over the top. Finished up with Alan Moore. He fumbled. Oh, they've fumbled a lot today, Darwin, because they're under pressure. Run down from the back was Ben Gallagher. Kick from Ross. He's probably been their best player down there in the forward line. Good work in the uh, back line. Good work from Ryan Ayres to knock the ball to ground. And the missed kick just goes down in the forward line. Dion Grant gets it. Kicks it out wide. Two players back there. Hard work from Clark. Knocked it to ground. Darwin can run away now out of defence. Long handball out here to Ross. Takes him on. Tyrrell gets to him. Kicks it out towards the boundary line. Sets it up for his teammate out there. That's Damien Zaman. He has some space to work into. Touches down and gets onto the right boot. Thumping kick into the forward line. Airs at the back. Got his hands up high. Simon Mankara. Airs onto the left boot. High kick into the forward line. Durke. Ball came over the top. Too quick in defence here, the Magpies, they run it away. Matty Armat charges onto the footy, right foot kick. Kick went for between two players, ball on the ground. Simon Quall missed, kicked it. Ball went out to Swift, 
Can he get to it? Falls over when he should have picked it up. In went Durkay looking for it. Oh, they've made a mess of it again, Darwin. Out towards centre half back for them. Good work, Corey Cunoff. Took on Damien Zaman. Good support came in from Adensel. Kick out towards the half forward line here. Gathered in by Ross. Defending grimly. Onto the left boot he goes. Thumps him back down into the forward line. Adensel leads in the race to the ball in front of Damien Zaman. And then runs from the wing. Thumps it up the centre half forward. A little push out. Holding on, says the umpire. Magpies are going to get the free kick. Well, they're playing like a team that lost last year and they want to make, a, make amends. There's no doubt about that. They're um, ignited the Magpies. Big tackle on Nathan Grant as Moore comes away with it. Hits it out wide. Brian Ross has been fantastic. Has it and then his kick was ordinary. Set poor old Zamet up who didn't, wasn't going to have much of a chance with that. They got to him pretty hard. Ball goes under a couple of fallen players and they wrestle just a little bit and one of them there is Salem Hassan and the other one is Zamet. Ross should have made better with that kick. He made it very hard on his teammate. The free kick just prior to that that you called with uh, Tyrrell, very experienced on Tyrrell's behalf then. It was a push out, you called the push out. Free kick probably should have gone the other way. Tyrrell pushed the play, grabbed hold of his, uh, uh, got his jumper, grabbed hold of it at the same time and received the free kick. It was a very experienced play. Keegan knocked it to Hassan and kicked it around his body, up and towards their forward line. And uh, that was Jared Barrington pushed out of the play just a little too easily. Pretty willing out on the far side of the ground. Ball knocked inside the 50 metre line. Stokes' handball was a beauty. Bun caught with the footy and driven into the ground. Brand in there working for it. That's Stokes with the handball. He chases it still. They've grabbed him. He's got to get a free kick for that, surely. He must get a free kick for that. And Moore gets a little untidy with Trent Henschel. Well, yeah, for a long way away from the, uh, from the play on that occasion. Scrappy Grant went to ground. Bring that uh, either way you like, but a um, Matty Armats follows, Matty Stokes follows it, was met pretty heavily there. The umpires decide to let it go. Matt Armat between a couple of two players. They need him to fire over the top to Ross. Ross has to go off at an angle and kick with the left boot. Handball from uh, Efren Tippenwoody. Simon Quall out on the wing, works himself into some space and then thumps it into the forward line. Jerry Frank front position, Ryan Ayres from the back, stole it somehow, extended the arms, knock over the top to Williams. Williams runs to 50, touches down and then kicks it goal, brings it into the goal square. Ephraim Tippenwoody. Good work by Williams there, he um, sucked the player in, drew him to him and uh, this young fella slipped. Got up, had time to do three push-ups and still took the mark. They need this goal, they need it badly, the Buffaloes. And they need to do something to free Matty Armat up. He's just been checked so closely by Bailey. Bailey's been fantastic. Um, and he's probably frustrated Matty, but he needs to get into this game and um, be responsible for some of these forward thrusts. 15 Whistle. points to the margin. Tip and Woody runs in. Kicks a goal and reduces it back to nine. Well, they need to follow that up with another quick one. The breeze has died right off, Charlie, and uh, not having a big impact at all. And uh, if the Buffaloes can bridge the gap, we're in for a great finish in this game. We we'll just have a look at this. Williams could have had a bounce. He could have got rid of it, but he, uh, he did. He touched on the ground and uh, just drew Kern off all the way. One on two in the goal square. Tip and Woody was fantastic. Well, is the pendulum going to swing back in favour of the Buffaloes here? Charlie, if the, the Sorry, Glenn. if the team does go down, it won't be through lack of support from their supporters. You can hear <laughs> them in the stands. They're really getting behind the Buffaloes. I tell you what, if that storm out to our right hits here, it is going to pour. Kick to the 50-metre line. Ryan Ayres, hands on the footy. Jerry Frank with a deaf little touch. Ephraim Tip and Woody. He can kick a goal from there, Ryan Ayres. 50 metres out. Thump that goal. Good defensive work. Very, very good defensive work. Well, wouldn't that have brought the hands down? Um, Glenn was right, I could feel rumbling through um, through the bottom of my feet here in the grandstand, and uh, Buffalo crowd have come to life. A goal there would have just set the place on fire. Drew Chapel, no nonsense, straight up the middle. Keegan at the back, knocked it on where Corey Cunith got it. He brought it up to number 14's go hard at the footy. Nathan Grant, he'll kick it off the ground, or he tried to. Barrington goes in. He tried to get it out a little further. Big tackle that time. Alan Moore with the ball in front of him. Terrific play, Alan Moore. Feeds with the left boot. Matty Armat running with the fly to the footy. 
takes a great mark, thought about playing on, and Brent Bailey brought back on the mark. He wanted to get it to Simon Quag, Bill Martin, but he just couldn't get it there. And now he goes to Williams, who will get a free kick. So Williams has it. It just shows the focus and discipline in this side. Mick Williams was hit heavily, and uh, geez, he would have responded to something like that in the earlier days, and uh, they've been great. That is goodness me. The umpire might have been sucked in again there. Gee, that came off some Darwin hands, no doubt about that. Costly. Adensall got it from Jeffrey and then went further across field to the back pocket on the other side of the ground. Handball to Adensall who continued to run. Ross will chase him. Went with the right foot kick up towards the wing. Swift is a long way out of position. And Forsyth had front position but ball pushed over the boundary line. Well, I'll tell you what Charlie, when in doubt, put the whistle away. I'm not, uh, not for just plucking one out of mid-air. When in doubt, put the whistle away and uh, let it go to a 50-50 contest. Russell came over the top there, knocked the ball to ground. Adams all looking for it. And then he goes in and left it behind. Might be Forsyth tracked under the footy there. Adams all in looking for it. Swift in there as well. It is Brent Forsyth. He'll get up. Two Maggie players to get up. That's a pretty ordinary looking magpie there. Uh, Bill has got some bad magpie legs. Uh, certainly wouldn't have him in a sandwich. <laughs> He's enjoying himself if it's a he. It's an it. Ball up far side of the ground. Keegan taps towards the boundary line. Forsyth kicked it out of bounds on the foot. Darwin can put the pressure back on here. Supporters look on. Kick up towards the 50 metre line. Keegan, as he's done all day, drop back and hope that they kicked it to him and they continue to do that. In goes Simon Munkara, paddles it out. Wants uh, Quall. Quall kicks it off the ground. McMasters gets there and pushes it over the boundary line and a throw in some 10 metres around from the behind post. That storm, uh, Glenn, can you tell us just how close that storm is? Well, some of it seems to have drifted over part of the ground, but I think the body of it is staying over the airport. So hopefully, hopefully we will get away with this, Charlie. That's what the weatherman says. Just picking it up on screen there. It's a big one if it hits. Keegan thumps it, gains about five metres, knocks it away a little further. Well, the Buffaloes have got this close on a few occasions and, um, and the Palmerston team have been good enough just to edge away. I can tell you right now, if Buff can snap a goal or set a goal up in this forward thrust, the, um, the crowd are going to come to life like never before. 5-7 plays 7-3. It's a great grand final. Free kick gone to the Magpies in defence. Keegan, the Ruckman in the back pocket. Not a bad looking kick, just sort of the wing. Darwin in front position. They feed it in. It's a beautiful kick. Oh, it's a free kick on the other side. And again, one of these ticky touch woods, and they all seem to be going the way of the Magpies. And uh, didn't pick it up. So two will to take the kick from the scoreboard wing. And he's happy with it. The skipper. Oh. Oh. Goodness me. Well, can't work that out. Take a little tap on. And that comes hard. Aaron Davey into the forward line. McLean in defence. Michael McLean deep in the back pocket. Gee, that's an ordinary kick, isn't it? They knock it to ground. Corey Acuna ducked and over the top when Mick Williams' ball went free to Adam. So Swift came at him. He kicked it into the forward line. Darwin defending here. Grand final up for grabs. Clark Court. Then kicked it out wide. Stokes will get to it and take on Clark, take on Ross and kick it into the forward line. Darwin defend again and kick out of bounds on the foot. Is it out on the foot? Might have been uh, out of bounds before he kicked it on the challenge. Yep, I think you're right, Bill. to be a throw in. Poor. Well, the tempo hasn't gone anywhere. They're out to win this. This is what you um, train and sweat for all year. When they sit and uh, watch this in replay, both these teams will know they've played a grand final. It's a tough encounter. Ball at the 50 metre line. Darwin defending here. Pack of players over the top. And the umpire will come in and ball it up. I am convinced we're going to be hit with one terrific storm and it's not that far away. 
50 metre defensive. Tyrrell did the ruck work. Got it down that time to Dion Grant. Look at that. Look at that. No wonder they're rejoicing. They love it. Here it is again. Have a look at the replay. A ball up on the 50 metre line. Great tap by Tyrrell. Grant was just fantastic in here. He was uh, on top of the situation. Great kick off a couple of steps. He's kicked it from 40. And that's a uh, fantastic goal for the uh, Magpie side. Just when uh, the Darwin side appear to be doing all the tagging. And the crowd are absolutely loving every minute of this. Tit for tat, goal for goal. Buffs need to answer this one. Ball has to do the ruck work and he knocks it down. Corey Kunoff waits for it and gets a hurried kick away out of the middle. Well, he is uh, having a purple patch, isn't he? He's thumped it into the forward line. Ball towards the boundary line. Darwin doing well in defence. Whistle gone. Darwin, I think, will get the free kick deep in defence here. Now, I missed the fight at that. I don't know who the goal umpire no, it's a throw had to in. call that. The goal umpire had to work because the boundary umpire was sitting up in the scoreboard. He must have been. He was that far behind. It was definitely a throw in, and it's only about five metres around from the Magpie goals. 8-3 to 5-7. Tap down. Kick to the 50 metre line. Handball back in field. Short kick across field. They set that up beautifully as it finished with Brett Forsyth. Look at the black and white streamers. As back goes Brent Forsyth. Well, they've kicked the goal apiece so far in this third quarter. He'll go short to Adensel. Well, He's directly out in front, Bill. They certainly haven't gained anything distance-wise and um, very little on the accuracy side of things. So Forsyth was obviously um, not real confident at kicking from uh, just inside 50. And you'd think it, um, it might be on, on Matty Addison's um, distance. Although he's directly in front and the breeze has just died down to nothing. So um, not got a chance of kicking this and they would have been in the uh, in the first quarter. Former Wanderers player will kick from 45 directly in front. 8-3 to 5-7. Looks pretty good. It's a good kick. It's a big goal. The kick two in this third quarter. 9-3 to 5-7. Well. Worrying time for the Buffaloes. That's what good teams do, don't they? And uh, they just respond, and Buffs had all the play in the uh, in the early stages. Magpies have come back in emphatic fashion. And just kicked these two goals in a couple of minutes. So we're at the 14-minute mark, and uh, the Magpies seem to be in control of this quarter. 20 points. Now the margin. 37 played 57. Matt Adamson would just set one goal. Keegan to do the ruck work. Stevens goes in. Tap down. Adelson is running with adrenaline at the moment. After that goal. Away they come off the boot of Damien Zamet. Up into their forward line. Simon Mankara charges on the footy. Then sets it up for Ryan Ayres and gets it to him. Ryan Ayres will go short. Shane Stevens running backwards. They came over the top to Drew Chapel. No free kick in it. Jerry McLeod, uh, Jerry Frank there. Well, that's been the story of the day. These chip-ins from uh, outside 50 just haven't come off. There's been a bit too much air in them for Buffaloes, and uh, the de defensive work, nevertheless, has been terrific from the Farmston side. And just a big hello to those uh, people who watch down at Papunya. Keith Jarrah in the lot. Yeah. The start one had a chance there, and uh, they kicked it behind, hitting the post with Ryan Ayres. Well, they need a bit of luck to go their way, the, the, um, the Buffaloes. They just need to snap a goal like that as we have a look at the score at the 15 and a half minute mark. 57 plays 38, so they need a goal and they need it now, the Buffaloes. Jerry Frank gets it and then un unloads to Russell Jeffrey, who drives it out of defence up to the wing. That was good front position, Dion Kelly. Bar Barrington left the footy behind, Efren Tippin Woody went in. Jock McLeod got free, gave the handball upfield. Aaron Davey handballed over to the running Thomas Simon, up the centre half forward. In goes Bun. That's a good mark. Good, strong, solid mark at centre half back. And Ross, no one within 30 metres of him. Where will he go? Swift. He did very, very well, Robbie Swift. 
sold the dummy and then got onto the right boot, spearing kick to Gary Durkay. He's got away from Russell Jeffrey for the first time in the match. He was about three metres clear and he got a beautiful pass and that's what he needed. Russell Jeffrey will stand 48 metres out from goal as Gary Durkay comes in. 50 metre line, plenty of elevation. Drifts across the face of goal, push out. It's got to be a free kick from McMasters. Well, that was absolutely ridiculous from young Kelly there. Just no need for that. Had the ball covered regardless what happened, he's just given a blatant free kick away. And the ball's now roll off hands and to the other side of the goals, alongside the behind post for a throw in. Well, I reckon those sort of chips have hit double figures now and um, they just give me goals there. Uh, they're, they're just within scoring range and uh, I think they'd be better off having a, uh, having a, regardless of the angle, having a snap for goal. Of course, they can rectify that if they kick a goal from this. Dirk eight. McLeod runs in and kicks the behind. So he, he conceded uh, a behind by kicking it through to Jock McLeod. Well, they need a goal and they need it in this forward thrust. Chapel brings the ball back in. Good chip pass. They had a number of options there. And Magpies take it out of defence. McMaster took a look over his shoulder and took his eye off the footy. Well, lucky not to be penalised that time, I can tell you. Damien Zammett, you are very, very lucky. Russell Jeffrey lost it. Simon Munkara drops it in short. Will it sit for Quall? He'll still get in the clear. One way and then the other. Then kicks it goal. I think he's got it. He's trying to buy the umpire. He's trying to buy him. Umpire Brian Weatherall says, no, you missed it. Behind. Well, he did. We have a look at this. Munkara was fantastic. Look at the kick. It's just one of those ones that haven't come off. Paul was quite good, forked around, got to learn to use his right foot. He had an opening on the right side, chose not to do it, but we've got some action in the centre. We've got someone down and hurt and with a stretcher out, Charlie. Might be, is it Jerry? It's not Jerry Frank. No, it's not Jerry Frank. Can't pick up who it is. I think, it's, I think it's Edward Darcy. I'm not sure of that, but uh, certainly two or three Magpies players seem to collide at the same time. Yeah, Edward Darcy, thanks. Glenn, it is Edward Darcy down there, and they've... Uh, because this is a worrying sign, he hasn't moved and uh, they look very, very... We'll have a look at this um, replay here. Jock McLeod, head flash. That's what it is, a head flash with his teammate. And that's a sickening sort of thing. We'll have another look at that. As ugly as it is, we'll see it again. Eyes only for the ball from both these players. Zamet moved out the way, clever move and bang. Jeez, that hurts. A lot of damage can be caused in that and they're very concerned, both players and officials out there. Obviously concerned with the, the neck, and uh, that's what happened. Let's hope he's OK. This is good, Darcy. Going to hold the game up for quite a bit of time, this, but uh, just let's hope he's OK. Just one of those unfortunate things in uh, football. The Darwin player was uh, between the two Magpie players there as uh, McLeod lined him up, the Darwin player, and then the Darwin player slipped or moved away to one side and uh, we have a look at the crowd and uh, in this um, quiet time certainly the mascot the uh, the palmerston mascot providing plenty of entertainment the young fellas got up so there that's a are. good sign that's good good to see a little G. bit of blood there would be certainly coming off but no need for the stretcher but that's good to see his neck's moving okay and uh his parents will be relieved as will the whole the entire crowd here today i guess Richard McLean waiting to come on, take the place of Edward Darcy. It looks like they are going to take him off on the stretcher. I don't think he wants to go off on the stretcher, but that's certainly the way it looks like it's going to uh, be at this stage. And guaranteed they'll take him through the uh, interchange in the hope of getting him back on. Yeah, you still, just because he could move his head, Bill, you, you still have to worry about the neck, don't you? Oh, too right, Charlie. And uh, you know, they're worrying signs and the repercussions after something like this is we have a look at the brain trust there. Nick McLean, Jock McLeod and Mark West. I think they've got a neck brace out there, Bill, and putting it on him, which makes a lot of sense. For sure. Some of these Palmerston trainers have been around a long time and, um, of course, the docks out there. I guess uh, on a positive note, the uh, the storm that's been threatening, it's certainly um, prevalent in the background, but it appears to be um, going around, and uh, let's hope it doesn't... Um, 
we don't have a deluge and uh, a mar this terrific spectacle but um, all the forward thrust all the forward work by the um, Darwin side has got a result in a the goal they've had two near misses in their last two forward thrusts there we have a good look at the neck brace modern technology the old days Bill they just uh, throw you over the shoulder and yes. carry off <laughs> exactly right he come a long way in, uh, in every facet of the game and uh, he'll come off to just uh, thumping applause from both uh, and great to see a lot of the Buffalo people down there clapping and uh, good sportsmanship shown right across the board here and this is going to be one of the longest quarters we'll have a look at the crowd a quick crowd in oh, they were about to resume play and the Magpies have it uh, from that behind and they'll bring the ball back into play so footy to resume the long kick out drew chapel keegan front position good knock from the back firing kick to durko handball over the top pedro stepping to darkus he unloaded kick around the body here into the goal square chance to kick it off the ground a little fumble from russell jeffrey you make a fumble like that and the opposite number nine was on him in a flash. Well, Russell, it's just one of those things, take nothing away from Russell Jeffrey, but uh, we'll have a look at the replay here. Great work, super speed, kick around the body. Russell had it covered, just got a terrible bounce. Mankara, kick off the ground. Now, if ever you wanted to expose someone, if ever you wanted to kick a goal like that, you couldn't pick. Who would you want to pick? You'd pick Russell, you'd pick the captain coach or the coach of the opposition team at least. And let's hope that just has an impact on certainly when I say let us hope, let Darwin hope that that has an impact. But uh, they needed that goal, the buffs, and they need to follow it up with another one, and then we'll be in for a great last quarter. And Simon Mankara, of course, wearing the number six. So ball out of the middle for the Magpies here. Keegan went looking for Ross. Another possession for him. Mick Williams will get there first and take a good mark on his chest. Darwin making a real go at it now. Gets to Ryan Ayres. He worked himself into space, did Ryan Ayres, one way and then the other, onto the left boot, long kick out goal, rolls into the goal square. Magpies running back with the flight of the ball. Gia took some courage, and it was there, and Dion Kelly back there as well. Well, I think if Mick Williams hadn't have played on the, had, after that mark, he would have bought 50 because um, Chappell was on the mark and um, just wouldn't come back, and I think the umpire was about to pay 50. Williams played on. Just if they get another goal here, Charlie, we've got a game on our hands. Russell Jeffrey in the back pocket. Manuel Durke stands the mark. Dion Kelly offers. He'll take it wide to the other side. The target is Drew Chappell. Mick Williams got up very high and put a fist on the footy. Magpies go up searching and get it to Matt Adams, so they break away on the wing far side. Ross comes at him hard. Made him work very hard. Did very well too. Ball rolling towards the... Uh, boundary line on the far side and knocked over and the umpire's whistle goes well, and Kent, Quentin Brewer runs across the boundary umpire and he'll throw it in young Brian Ross is having an absolute um, terrific um, game on that back flank maybe even uh, worthwhile throwing him for a run on the ball he's a prolific ball getter he's a great touch low to ground he looks fit maybe throw Matty Armat um, who's been tagged pretty well out of the game it may even be time for a swap or to be looking something along those lines Mankara just couldn't control the footy. Alwyn Davey doing the job on him and they exchange a few pleasantries, <laughs> which is all a little unnecessary. Oh, come on. How can you pick an, a free kick near umpire? No, he's, yes, he has. Yes, the best thing there is just to ball it up. Oh, of course, throw it in. It was out of bounds. Russell Jeffrey from the half back line kicks to the wing. That's a great mark, isn't it? It is. Matty Armat is just um, he's limping, he's, he's um, cramping up. Rick McLean, who can uh, kick a mile, he gave it off to Dion Grant. Goes a goal, and I think he's got it. He has. Well. The Magpie crowd celebrate. Great rebound goal there. Terrific rebound goal. And this is what they've been able to do all season. We'll have a look at the replay. Good handball, in ball there. Long kick by Tyrrell. 
up towards the uh, the 50 metre. Little clever push out. McLean, great handball over the top. Sees Grant, runs into an open goal. Desperate lunge at the end there. Not good enough. Great goal. Good response. Terrific side, this Magpie outfit. They are, and the three goals that Dion Grant have kicked have all been beauties, haven't they? Certainly two of them have been just absolute rippers. He's a live boy. He's a very good player, but um, sometimes hot and cold and uh, fades in and out today. He's been exceptional. Buffaloes with some work to do now. 6-10 plays 10-3. How much pride left in the Buffaloes? Ross from the middle. Bill, they heard you. They're giving him a run on the ball. Kick into the forward line. Push out. Mack by free kick because they had front position. getting slowly to his feet. Salem Hassan might have had the wind knocked out of him. Nadia Allows Matt. it to get away a free handball to Chapel. Matty Matt makes his way off. McLean tried to get to the footy. Efren Tippenwood he got there. Ball along the ground. Grant with a slick little handball. They can go further over top to Thomas Simon. Stokes has front position. Ball knocked to ground. I'll tell you what, there'll be a riot here if they keep picking up these ticky touchwood ones and they all keep uh, going in the one direction. More across there and thumps it over the boundary line. So the Magpies saying, we want this more than you do to Darwin. And they have it where they want it in the forward line. It's in the hands of Brent Forthys. Kicks it to the far side, pocket. Ball knocked away. Might be a chance here for a kick off the ground. Goes right across the face and lands <laughs> just in the field of play. Well, Might have been Adinson with the opportunist to uh, kick a goal. I think it was, and uh, either Stokes or Adisal. Very clever, and if that had gone through, there's Matty Adisal there. He's a bulldog. Burrows in, he's hard at it. Siren to signal three-quarter time. Just as the back, he's got the football. 10-3 to 6-10. Darwin with some work to do. Well, we have a look at the goal kickers, three apiece, Henschel, Stokes and Grant, and Matty Addisil, the solo one. Tip and Woody, two, Mankara, Williams, Paul, Zammett, one apiece for the Buffaloes. And we'll have a look at the stats, and uh, Buffaloes have got plenty of the ball, as the kick suggests, 20-odd uh, extra kicks. The marks have even dried out, handballs well and truly in favour of the Magpie side. Three kicks, dead even, and hit outs have tipped in the uh, ledger of the Buffalo side. So Darwin have to kick four goals and hold the Magpie scoreless in the last quarter to win the grand final. 10-3, plays 6-10. Territory footy from the vault is thanks to these valued partners. We're here for when the heavens open and the winds howl. We're here for when the water just won't stop. We're here for the wet and we're here for the dry. We're here because we know there's nowhere else you'd rather be. And there's nowhere else we'd rather be either. TIO Home Insurance. We're for Territorians. Time to escape cos I'm in need of warmer weather Sail upon the stream to find there's someplace better and I'm blue far and Great Northern Brewing Co. The beer from up here. before making an investment decision. The time to kickstart your business is now. Get your message across with the experienced local TV production team at Kick Digital. Cost effective, rapid turnaround, exceptional service. Kick Digital, television production, energised. Well, huge storm cloud rolling in above the lights here at Football Park. Marara's the grand final goes into the last quarter here and the Magpies in the box seat. I'm not sure about my uh, mathematics, Bill. I might have uh, worked it out all wrong, but I can tell you it's 6-10 to 10-3 and uh, you'd like to be on the Maggies. 
Yeah, two. They've uh, they've been the team to beat all year, and um, let's just see if the Buffs can come up with uh, an extra effort in this last quarter. Russell with the kick, out wide for Ryan Ayres. He's held without the footy, and is going to get the free kick. That's a great sight there. Two terrific young footballers, Ryan Ayres and Trent Henschel. Good matchup too. They're similar size, and that means that Henschel's come up the ground. Not many players in the league can kick like Ryan Ayres as he thumps it into the forward line. Magpies repel. They know they've got to work for about 25 minutes here. And they'll grab their first grand final or first premier since 1980-81 when they beat Wanderers at Gardens over by a goal. Moore, along the interchange area. Goes with a handball to Ross. Fumbled. A little handball out. Knight got it on a little further. Quoll. Back went Moore, found himself in space. Efren tipped Moody. They've made something out of nothing along the boundary line. McMaster with a magnificent mark. Oh, that's a terrific mark. Well, it was a great mark, and he tacked that with a lot of passion, a lot of vigour, and he was missing that last quarter. He had plenty of opportunities, both in attacking the ball and going for his marks, and that was a terrific mark by young McMaster's, and uh, it's a very, very, very acute angle. He'll struggle to kick a goal from here, but if he does, look out. No, well, he tried for the impossible, and it didn't work. He's kicked it out of bounds on the full, so he's uh, given it away to Russell Jeffrey. Looks very intense. The coach working out of the back pocket. Kick to 50 metre defensive. Russell from the back, got the climb and took a great mark. That was a terrific mark. There's two great marks from Darwin. Well, they've done this the last two times they've played the Magpies. They just refuse to give in. And they'll need to dig deep to get back into this one. What have they got? Ball in the hands of Richard Russell. Chip kick. Russell Jeffrey cleans up again. Kicks it out wide. Barrington gets there first and sockles it off the ground. In front of Gabby Frank. Caught from the back. Ball spills free. Gabby Frank gets back there. Good little handball back in. Maggie's with plenty of run. Up towards the wing. Ball knocked free. Magpies now can run away. Through Drew Chapel. In towards the forward line. McLean in good position. Big foot race on here. Nathan Grant will get there first. Moore gets on him. Kicks. Two Darwin players here. McLean in back position. Ball goes to ground. Sock the kick out for him where Moore was pretty good. Moore wants to go across field to Ross. He took a chance, but he got it to him. Ross dropped the footy. Gee, that's a bad drop. Darwin have dropped some crucial ones tonight. Yeah, well, he really, um, when you put that into perspective, he had nothing to go to upfield anyway, so probably a good result in the end, that uh, he really had nothing upfield, and that was perhaps what he was concerned about. But fortunate for Brian Ross, it uh, didn't cost him too much. Moore kicks to Pedro Stefanodakis, was brilliant in the preliminary final against Southern Districts in the rain. High kick out towards the wing. Williams, Bun goes back there as well. Magpies charge at the footy. Dion Grant has been brilliant. Spillage, Simon Quoll tried to kick it. Trent Henschel went in. Quoll got it this time. They caught him. Handball came out. Knocked on a little bit further. Efren Tip and Woody working hard for the footy. Caught in the tackle. Magpies desperate in defence here. They go in looking for it. Alwyn Davey in there with it. In goes Zamet looking for it. Whistle. Hold it up, says Adam Roberts. And ball it up some 20 metres out from goal. Some great desperate work there by the defenders. And uh, since they want to hang on to this one, you can just tell the Maggies are desperate. Buffs need a goal. Right. Ryan Ayres has lifted the sagging spirit of the Buffalo. He rolled through Bill Martin and he just rolled it through for a wonderful goal. Well, uh, special player. Let's have a look at the replay here. Keegan, big thump out. And there was just nothing. He was outnumbered, Red. Yeah, just um, almost ballet-like, tiptoed through there, and a fantastic goal. What a future this kid's got. He is just tremendous. And it's closed the gap, and it's not over till it's over in a grand final. Charlie, I... to 10 Sorry, Glenn, go. I can tell you, that's not what Russell Jeffrey wanted. He told them that the only two things standing between them was the clock, which they've got no control over, and the blokes in two blues. And this is not the start he wanted. Well, they've been able to answer it all night. Let's see what they do here. They've been good in a situation like this. And the Darwin footy public 
And I mean that as Darwin as a, as a city. And the Palmerston players, team, trying to lift their teams here. Spillage, Darwin in looking for the footy. Gary Durkay, he got there and was pulled out of the contest. No free kick for him, no, and it wasn't there either. Defensive kick out wide was very good. Got it out to the hard-working Brent Forsyth. Breaks away from half-back. Whistle is gone. Darwin get the free kick. Wow. I saw that, Charlie, and I can tell you what, young um, Stefan Adakis was very clever. That was a disgraceful decision. The umpire got it horribly wrong, and buffs have come out on the um, receiving end of this, and it, uh, fortunes have a tendency of even themselves out. Stefan Darkus just pulled the Palmerston player within uh, 10 metres away from the ball, and he's ended up with a free kick. To the goal square. Big climb at the back, rolls right over the back. That's where you want a sweeping player running around the back. Someone like Efren Tippen Woody or Simon Mankara. Well, a goal now, a goal now, and um, we might be back here next week. It's 11 points. It's played a good uh, game back there, Alwyn Davy. Chips to the 50. So too this man, Dion Kelly. Thomas Simon. Brent Bailey. Uh, ball to ground. Palmerston supporters incensed. And Ben Smith has run in. The umpire who was not officiating saw it from about 30 metres away, ran in and paid the free kick, and he was absolutely right. Little push out. Yes, that's right too. Adam Roberts got it right as well. Advantage played. Oh, right Stephen right. Adakis with a long kick. Down towards the 50 metre line. There's a push out. Now, if that's not a free kick, then there's no such thing as a free kick. This time there's a free kick and Darwin will get it. Well, I can Poetic tell you. justice, Bill Martin. It went out of bounds as well, too, for mine, Charlie. Umpires have just lost, um, and it's been reversed. The umpires just seem to have lost the ascendancy here. It's a raffle, and you hate to see the umpires come into play. Better off when they're not noticed. Punch towards the boundary line. Big opportunity gone there for Darwin. And the Maggies breathe another sigh of relief. It was right in front of their adoring fans. Ryan Ayers on camera. 7-11 to 10-4. Darwin with the last throw of the dice here. Stefan Adakis tries to bust his way through. Pushed it out to Ross. Ross will get to this. Can he get the kick away? Yes, he does. Swift in good position at the back here. Ball knocked to ground. Gathered in this time by Thomas Simon. Robbie Swift with the footy. Over the right shoulder. Durkay. He's got it. And then plays on. And then runs in and kicks a goal. And oh. they are back, the Buffaloes. Have a look at this crowd. They've come here to watch a good game of footy and a good game of footy they're getting. We'll have a look at the replay. Great work by Swift there. Great work. And he summed it up and he saw Dirk. Hey, he led good. The big man just took off. He took off nearly overbalanced, ran into an open goal. And the Buffalo crowd punched the air. And you'll hear the chant go up. They're deafening. Robbie Swift was brilliant in that. I'll tell you what, it's the breeze, and we might go down to Glenn. The breeze has swung around with the aid of this um, storm that's heading our way. And if anything, perhaps at ground level, you can just feel the breeze has swung and maybe um, favouring the Buffaloes. Darwin with some momentum into the forward line. Ball knocked away. Mag Maggie's rely on Drew Chapel to come away with the kick. He's been very good as well. And he gets it off to Hassan and kicks it out wide to the far side of the ground. Mark taken out there, Malsey. Runs up just short of the wing and kicks it. Barrington in front position. Got to the footy. Did well with the twist. Knocked the ball to ground here. Knocked out a little bit further here. Williams will close. Handball come over the top. Bun got there and then lost it. Gabo Frank charging at the footy. It gets back here. Handball that comes back in field. Chance here from the Maggies. Long way out from goal. Drifting kick. That's a magnificent mark. McLean has been trapped, but he'll run and kick a goal anyway. Oh, that was a wonderful mark, wasn't it? Oh, exceptional. Great football, great reply. And they've steadied. They've steadied the Maggies. That was fantastic. Good handball by Tyrrell around the corner. Gaboy Frank just um, got that ability of ball. Billius didn't go the ball. He went the man on that occasion. Good feed out by Addisall. Forsyth had a shot for goal. A one-on-one -on -one situation, a fantastic mark by McLean. Played on, attempted trip there. Great goal. 11-4, 8-11. Plenty of time left. 
if they're good enough. 11 points to margin. Maggie's in front. Darwin need to kick two to win it. They've got the breeze behind their backs, Darwin. It has swung around, as Bill said, with that big storm. Blowing in from the airport end. Keegan thumps. That was a very well-played setup. Tackle. Adensall's been good. Got it out this time to Malsey. Brings it into the forward line. Clark, solid. 30 metres out from goal. Takes the mark on his chest. Stood there like a rock. And his oh. kicking lets him down yet again. Kick to the one on two. Comes back to Barrington. They've given away possession here. Barrington has to go back and get it. Suckers the ball away or tried to get a kick away but dribbled it along the ground. Magpies keep the pressure back on. Tyrrell comes out. Ball is knocked away. Whistle is gone. I think it's going to be a magpie free kick. I'm pretty sure of it. It's going to be downfield. Well, ben, oh, heartbreaking stuff here for Darwin. Ben Smith uh, has come in on a couple of occasions and overruled the officiating umpire. And um, obviously they're not doing their job properly. Ball knocked to ground. Darwin get away again. Kick out to the 50 metre line. Knocked on a little further. Ball will bounce here. Can they pick it up? Got it and then lost it there from Tip and Woody. One way and then the other. Look at him go. Magnificent to step in the darkness. Give the to him. Robbie Swift out to his left. Can he see him? No, he's gone the wrong way. Oh, where did he go? Where did he go? He's just broken 18 hearts out there. <laughs> Kick back to Henschel. He has it at centre half back, Trent Henschel. Kicks for Tyrrell. Good position, Tyrrell. They had a hold of him, and he'll get the free kick, and he might get 50. Well, if you've got a faint heart, head home now, because it's no place for the faint-hearted. This is a great game, and uh, every contest has got to be made a winner at this stage. And Charlie, the first drops of rain starting to fall now. Tyrrell. He's kicked poorly. He's kicked it out of bounds on the foot. And lightning strikes. And you'll hear the thunder. Just to add a little more drama to it all. The Stevens, Shane Steven thumped it up. Keegan Big got there and lost it. Spillage went to Damien Zammett. Off he goes into the goal square. Durko, one hand at the footy. They were holding him. He was held. He was held and no free kick paid. Handball out here. Alwyn Davey, good play in defence. Handball out to Brent Bailey along the boundary line. And the book has come out. Well, I didn't see what happened there, but I hope one of these umpires books themselves because Gary Durke, big fella, being pulled up, and you can clearly see his jump eye pulled out. That was a very bad Let's miss. Let's have a look at the replay here. Gary Durke has obviously given him a late one here. Bit too high. Perhaps not a lot in it. The tribunal will sort that one out. And have a look at these youngsters. Probably don't really know what's going on the scoreboard, but... Uh, well, that's Gary's number, 28, so <laughs> the Gary Durke fan club. We'll have the, the um, play held up here again, and, uh, and a 50-metre penalty. So they need to refocus the Buffaloes, so they need to get it back. A goal here to the Maggies, you just see the, uh, the tide turn and perhaps be beyond it. A rebound situation. And the Buffaloes won't lay down until this siren goes. And the Maggies have it. Russell Jeffrey to Brent Bailey. He drops it. They'll close on him quickly. He's got time to kick. Tyrrell he wants. Gets it over the top. And Robbie uh, Zaman it is who sees it over the boundary line for a throw in. The Maggies 60 metres out from goal. 8-11. Plays 11 goals for as the rain starts to fall. Will favour the Magpies. They are in front here. Tyrrell tried to get the kick away. Stokes goes in looking for the ball. Paddle out to Grant. Kick down. Mousy. Or Hassan, it was Salam Hassan. He's gone a bit quiet, shot. Charlie. He had a great start to the game. And that blue flash of hair was everywhere, but he uh, hasn't played for a couple of weeks and uh, he's died out of the game. 11 5 to 8 11. More scoring shot to the Buffaloes. As the rain pours. It is belting down. Oh, silly. Moore tried to go over the top. Well, I'm sure he's been, Grant and gave away a free kick. I'm sure he's been told on many occasions that um, you're a ground-type player. 
keep your footing, and he continues to do that, Alan Moore, and this could be very costly. Kick into the forward line. Ball on the ground here. Magpies have it. Stokes. Goes around his body, was flattened as he got the kick away and kicked it behind. He was actually hooked it too far there, Stokes. You, you thought he would have struggled to... Um, struggled to have hooked it enough, and he hooked it too much. But have a look at the rain coming down. It yes, is pouring down. If we didn't have an atmosphere before, we've certainly got it now. Clark brings it out. The two 14s again. Alan Moore did well. Tapped it to his advantage. Kept the ball. He almost kept the ball in play. And just not able to as Keegan came across and put him out of the contest. Is that real rain that's falling down there, Glenn? Yeah, it's very, very wet, I can tell you. And it's just uh, it's made that ground so greasy now as you saw Alan Moore slide. And the ball goes over the boundary line. Well, the Maggie supporters will be just absolutely loving this. Darwin have to kick a couple of goals to win this. Yeah. And it might be beyond them. Yeah, with the rain, too, comes a fair amount of breeze, too. So they need long bombs. They don't want to be fancy now, the Buffaloes. Great work by Keegan. Great work. It's a good little touch on the smother, though. As Bum goes away and touches down at centre-half back. Who's he want upfield? Williams versus Drew Chappell. Ball on the ground. Adamsall goes in and kicks it off the ground. And then slips over. He's been good, Adamsall. Fed it up to the wing with a very good kick. Got it there to Drew Chappell. He's right on the wing in front of the scoreboard. He'll go over the top. Oh, they're playing it very well, the Magpies. Bring it back to Corey Cunoff. Darwin don't want the footy. The lightning flashes over the top. It's always going to hit the ground. There's the thunder. Magpies have the footy. And the kick. Was hoping to drop it in the goal square, but uh, McLean was standing back there, but the ball went through for a behind. 17 minutes gone. Well, they've certainly lifted the tempo of the Maggies. The rain's coming down very heavily now. Very heavily. Breeze favouring the end. The, uh, the Buffaloes are kicking as we see Clark playing on. We need a real forward thrust. The Buffaloes do if they're going to play any part in this game. They're out on their feet, but they're getting lifted by players like this one. He's Robbie got a Swift. He's got a paddock. He can touch again if he wants. He fires it into Durkay. A long way upfield. And Durkay to centre half forward with the kick. McMasters. Ball at the 50 metre line. Plenty of Darwin players there. McMasters is there as well. Ross got there. Caught without the footy. Play on, says the umpire. Ball on the ground. Ross pushed out of it. McMasters goes in and gets it. A little handball from Durkay. Gave it to Williams, ran through Swift and took it off him. They are desperate, Darwin, to get this. Stay with us as the rain pours down here. Great battle for the footy. In comes Bun looking for it a little recklessly. Henshaw lost it. Picked up this time by Simon Mankara. Kicks it to the goal square. But the Maggies come away with it. Up to Tyrrell. He's on the halfback flank. He goes out wide towards the boundary line with the kick. And ball forced over the boundary line. And they were appealing for holding the ball or deliberate out of bounds. Umpire ignores it all and lets the boundary umpire do his job. Well, I reckon the temperature's dropped about five degrees at least in the last five minutes with this rain. And it is bucketing down, as the, uh, as the screen would suggest. Buffaloes need a goal and need it badly. Away they come off the boot of Matthew Knight. In towards the forward line. Hard to pick players up here as it's forced toward. Look at the Maggie players. Four of them there in defence. Spillage goes to the 50 metre line and then left behind. They still have plenty of players down. There's only two players forward of the centre down here. Ross stands and takes the mark. In front of Corey Kunoff. The two number 18s matching up. A little kick over the top. And Stokes with a ton of courage. Took a very good mark at centre half back. And his dad will be very proud of him tonight. And dad, John Stokes, uh, the last premiership captain for the Magpies back in 8081. And maybe his son wearing his number tonight, the number two. and be a tear in the eye of uh, John Stokes. And his son doing him proud here tonight. Kick up into the forward line. Keegan, ball went free. Handball to Swift. Can he get his way through? Lost the footy. Kick out. Finishes up with Williams. 40 metres out, hurries his kick, oh. kicks it behind. 
20 minutes gone right now. Probably three minutes left in it, Bill. Well, they're not giving up the Buffaloes, but uh, this rain's just having its effect. Have a look at it. It's just come down in absolute bucket loads and uh, going to be very difficult, very difficult to um, salvage anything out of this. But nevertheless, a goal now would make them lift, and they need it, and they need it in the next 20 seconds. 13 points the margin. Darwin with the ball inside their 50. Maggie's flooding the defence, making it very difficult. Darwin with the footy, and they've kicked it out of bounds on the full. And that's the, the last thing they've wanted, as the pressure's taken off. And the Maggies have it. And they can take all the time in the world. And they will celebrate tonight long and hard. Well, it's in the bag, I'd say, at this stage. The Maggies, and this has just been a god's end. The Buffs take nothing away of being great. But this has been the best team all year. We haven't written them off too early, have we, Bill? I don't think so. It's uh, a little bit beyond them. And well, they're slowing it right down now, aren't they? Jerry Frank, a very experienced campaigner, and every kick's worth about three at this stage. Out wide to Henschel. Deep in the back pocket. Takes his time. Precious seconds ticking away. Darwin can't get their hand on the footy. It's heartbreaking for them. Sliding Mark D on Grant. Oh, we remember a couple of his goals tonight. They were fabulous. Gives it back to Jerry Frank. Well, you've got to find a man each now. You just cannot afford any further time to tick away. And in these conditions, a turnover is um, quite possible. You've got to get the footy back. That's what you've got to do. Well, we've had uh, a lightning strike here. It's blowing the lights out at Football Park Marara and uh, Bill Martin. It's never happened before, but the rules are that they can wait a half an hour and if they can restore the light, then the game will start again. Well, if they don't, goodness knows what's going to happen. But uh, as if the game didn't have enough, the lights have gone out. Absolutely incredible. Well, we were in total darkness for a while, but we've got one light on now. So hopefully the game will get back underway. There's only a couple of minutes left in the grand final. If you wanted any more drama, you couldn't possibly have asked for this. Well, we're going to continue play here, but I can tell you there's only three lights on and whether the Darwin Football Club will have grounds for uh, uh, appealing this decision or not, I don't know. But the light is not as good as it has been and there's uh, only a couple of minutes left in the grand final. Maggie's in control. Gee, it would be uh, just an injustice for the Magpies if they were to lose this game. They've been uh, the best side throughout this match here. Ball's up inside the Darwin 50-metre line. Kick off the ground here by Ryan Ayres. Gets to Gary Durkay. Kicks around his body and misses to the right. Kicks it behind. Two goals the difference. Well, Bill Martin, have you ever seen anything like it? No, and, and uh, it's amazing. The, um, the television brings it up a lot lighter than what it is. There are definitely one bank of lights out. And um, I think needless to say, the um, Magpie side had the game well and truly wrapped up. There can't be a lot of time left, and it's the longest quarter of football I've been involved in. Let me tell you that. Forsyth has been a brilliant player here tonight. Gets it over the boundary line on the far side of the ground and there'll be a throw in. What we can say, Charlie, is that as we have a look at the crowd there, the time clock on the scoreboard is actually approaching the 45-minute mark. <laughs> so, it's an amazing <laughs> quarter of footy. Hard at the footy out there is Stefan Adakas. Handball over the top. Richard Russell one way and then the other. Brings the ball back into play. Robbie Swift there. Good work, Grant, in defence. Got the handball out to the 50-metre line. Ball brought into the centre of the ground. Out comes Bunn with the footy in front of him. Will kick it off the ground and does. Down towards centre half forward. Mark taken in defence there. The Maggies can settle it down. Dion Grant. He's been a brilliant player today for the Maggies. Kicks it out wide. Wants Corey Kunoff. And he just steadies it down, Corey. So they've picked it up exactly where they left it off the Maggies. Just chipping it around. Tyrrell, very good mark in front of Matty Knights. Mark Terrell, he's been a, a great soldier for the Magpies. Been yeah. on the end of some fearful hidings with the side. He deserves all of the, the glory that comes his way here. Magpies still have it. They're holding on. Should have been a free kick played to Elwyn Davey. Now the whistle goes. Well, the screen is a Magpie free kick. This is the darkest uh, patch on the ground. You just hate anyone to get injured out there at the moment because goodness knows what may come of that. But it is quite the darkest um, area on the ground. 
And a goal here would snuff out any chance the uh, the Darwin side had, if at all there was any time left. Alwyn Davy with the ball. He'll just chip it over the top because the player was able to run down there, Matt Adensel. He is a workaholic and uh, they fell asleep there, the Buffaloes. They've got to remember that this game isn't over until the siren goes and you can ill afford just to let um, loose checking like that. Keegan's, Ke uh, sorry, Bill, Keegan's gone on a, a 40 metre, 50 metre run to run right down in the goal square. We've just all of a sudden had a burst of light. Adesol lines up, kicking from just inside 50. Wet conditions was always going to struggle. Ball alongside the boundary line. Handball, ball knocked off the ground here. Magpies in attack, out come Darwin, holding on there, must be a free kick, Darwin will get it in the back pocket, advantage play, kick out the centre half back, Alan Moore gets there, got it and then burst away, they come at him, caught and he gave the handball back in field but couldn't get it past Brent Bailey, he got it and then lost it, Zamet caught with the footy and he lost it, little handball comes out, got through Barrington's hand, he got flattened and went down in the flying mud here, dived at the footy again. Stefan Adakis comes in, tries to sucker it off the ground, got half a kick away. Berrington, Berrington pushed out of it. Comes out to Jerry Frank and he settles it down as Pedro Stefan Adakis gets on the mark. Siren goes, Magpie celebrate. Listen to the roar. Seventy three to sixty one. Magpies victorious. They are overjoyed. Russell, firstly, congratulations. How does it feel? Uh, it's unbelievable. Can't describe it. No way you can describe something like this, mate. No way in the world. This is a game that's had absolutely everything. Um, were you confident all the way through? You're never confident, I tell you. I mean, you know, like you can feel like you've got something in the bag, but. You can never really feel too confident, especially with the side against Buffs, because they just keep coming at you and keep coming at you. But, you know, today we won the close one, and it was the one that counted the most, mate. I'm, I'm wrapped for my boys. They, they put in a big year, mate. A lot, of, a lot of people don't realise what these guys had to go through to get to this, and they've done nothing. They've come up trumps, mate. Where was this game won and lost? What did you tell them? What, did they, what plan did they follow? Look, basically, mate, we knew for us to beat Buffs, we had to do it together. There was no, um, no fancy moves or anything like that. We just knew we had to put our head down, bum up, and work together towards the one goal, and that was securing a premiership, mate, and we got it. <laughs> and a bit of celebrating tonight? Uh, a lot of celebrating, mate. Uh, yeah, look, I don't know if we need it, really. We're on a high. We don't, certainly don't need a drink at the moment, but, you know, if we're taking the double, we won the reserves, we won the seniors, so, I mean, what more can you ask for, you know? Congratulations. Fantastic. I'll let you get back to the boys. No Thank you. Thanks, mate. Well, there's probably never been a grand final like it. And right at the very end, the uh, umpires went out and adjusted or readjusted the score that showed the Palmerston Magpies, in fact, winning by 13 points. Goodness, if Darwin had to kick a couple of goals at the end of that bill and they'd announced a replay and then checked the scoreboard and found out Palmerston won by a point. Look, it was a unique game in a lot of ways. Um, even the week leading up to it was, was quite bizarre. Um, I used to work at Perkins Shipping, uh, where Sea Swift is now, and, and the hierarchy of the NTFL came and visited me on a Wednesday, I think it was, pre-game. And um, all the head honchos came. Um, one of the things what happens with, um, with any grand final is if you're first through to grand final, you get the pick of what, um, what race you want to run out of. And I wanted to run out of, obviously, number one. I picked number one, not knowing who we were going to play. Um, that caused a lot of issues with the Darwin Buffaloes because they're obviously used to sitting at one end of the ground um, uh, and, and the hierarchy did ask before I'd reconsider that. Um, I said no, um, if it's upset them that much maybe it could be something that we could utilise you know, to our advantage so, so I stuck with, with that. And then of course in the last quarter when the lights went out um, and it was a tight game anyway and, and not knowing what was going on it, it was just the most bizarre game of footy I've, I've ever encountered. Um, when they first went out, I was, I was standing on um, Gary Durke. Um, he was playing for Buffs at the time and sort of looked at each other and we didn't know what, what to do. And I made my way over to the boundary line just to try to ask anybody that I could see, you know, what was going on. Uh, our bench was totally confused and unaware of, you know, w what would happen. And, I was lucky enough to catch the eye of Michael Barford and I said, Mick, what's going on, mate? What, what happens here? And he sort of said, look, we've got to get them on within 30 minutes, otherwise we cancel the game and, and possibly a replay. And I thought, oh, you know, we're that close to, to uh, holding up the cup. It caused a, 
fair bit of anxiety in myself, to be honest with you. Um, the longer it went on, um, the anxiety levels built, not just for all the players on the ground, but certainly um, the supporters that were there. And I, I took myself off the ground and, and, and replaced myself. I, I, I had that much heightened anxiety, and I've never had that before in my life. Uh, and finally they got the lights back on and, and it was um, uh, suitable enough to, to continue playing the last five or six minutes or whatever it was. And I was walking up and down the race. Uh, I didn't even look at the game in the last five or six minutes. I, I just had all these emotions going through me, knowing what it meant to the, to the footy club, uh, knowing what it meant to the many players and uh, supporters that had gone before us. You know, your John Stokes, your Ray Bales, Ray Hayes, Mick Malady's and you know, Greg Myers and people like that that put their heart and soul in the football club. I really knew the, you know, the enormity of um, pulling this one off. So when that siren finally went, mate, it was a massive release. And um, that release lasted probably a week or two, to be honest with you. <laughs> when, when the lights did go off, we, we certainly had time to bring the players in on the field. Um, and, and my message to them was, this is exactly what I was talking about when things aren't in your control. And, and it wasn't in our control, it was totally out of our control. I said, but once those lights come back on, we need to get back into control um, and, and make sure that you know we finish this game off and, and, and we actually win the game. Um, because as soon as the lights came on, they actually scored a goal fairly quickly. Uh, and I remember walking up and down, I looked at Majo and Majo looked at me and it was like, oh no. Um, but to, that, to our players' credit, we, we actually gained uh, the momentum in the last three or four minutes and, and that was certainly enough to ensure that uh, we won the game. How does it feel? Uh, it's unbelievable. Can't describe it. No way you can describe something like this, mate. No way in the world. This is a game that's had absolutely everything. Um, were you confident all the way through? You're never confident. I tell you, I mean, you know, like you can feel like you've got something in the bag, but you can never really feel too confident, especially with the side against Buffs, because they just keep coming at you and keep coming at you. But, you know, today we won the close one and it was the one that counted the most, mate. I'm, I'm wrapped for my boys, they, they put in a big year, mate. A lot, a lot of people don't realise what these guys had to go through to get to this and they've done nothing, they've come up trumps, mate. Where was this game won and lost? What did you tell them? What, did they, what plan did they follow? Look, basically, mate, we knew for us to beat Bust, we had to do it together. There was no, um, no fancy moves or anything like that. We just knew we had to put our head down, bum up and work together towards the one goal and that was securing a premiership, mate, and we got it. <laughs> and a bit of celebrating tonight? Uh, a lot of celebrating, mate. Uh, yeah, look, I don't know if we need it really. We're on a high. We don't, certainly don't need a drink at the moment. But, you know, if we're taking the double, won the reserves, won the seniors, so, I mean, what more can you ask for, you know? Congratulations. Fantastic. I'll let you get back to the boys. No Thank you. Thanks, mate. Well, there's probably never been a grand final like it. And right at the very end, the uh, umpires went out and adjusted or readjusted the score that showed the Palmerston Magpies, in fact, winning by 13 points. Goodness, if Darwin had kicked a couple of goals at the end of that bill and they'd announced a replay and then checked the scoreboard and found out Palmerston won by a point, it was a thrilling grand final, wasn't it? It was mayhem, absolute mayhem. A lot of crying, uh, a lot of hugging. You know, people swapped the ground. Um, I, I can remember just so many tears and, and, and so many people had lived through the last 10 or 15 years of, of hell, really. Um, you know, North Darwin and got some real big touch-ups in that period of time. So, you know, for the club to finally finally pull one back after 20 years and, and put, put to bed some of those real bad losses leading up to those good years was um, something really special. And I think um, every Palmerston Magpies person really, really appreciated the, the fact that our Warriors went out there and, and did the job. I'm not sure if it was the first time that there was joint Cheney medalists, but Dion Grant's game for us was superb. Uh, he had an absolute brilliant, brilliant game. And so did Brian Ross. Brian Ross was in everything. Um, he really um, worked hard to, to change the tide at, at times. And so both players in my, in my book were, were certainly worthy, worthy recipients, for sure. Look, it's been a while since that winning feeling at the at the club and it was it was the first of, of two uh, in fact it was the second of four consecutive grand finals um, and, and the players and, and and the support staff from those days we, we always catch up we you know we talk um, obviously I've, I've, I've moved back to Wanderers over the last you know three or four years whatever it's been and followed my kids but um, I will always love the Palms and Magpies I, I've got such a such a soft spot from you know a club that has battled most their most of their lives, um, 
So to be part of something um, that is really special and, and, you know, obviously to be able to get a bit of respect in the competition, I think that was something that um, I'll tre tre um, treasure for the rest of my life.